What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 32 of the Hive Mind Podcast. No guests this week because uh, Dope didn't really get to talk last week. So I'm curious what he's up to. Can, yeah, last week's podcast was a little bit different, but people seem to enjoy it. Uh, we had Doug on, who's got quite a bit of stories, and I'd recommend checking that one out if you're into uh, what these Minecraft YouTubers do that are, you know, millionaires at age 17. So it's a pretty good episode. So anyway, man, wait, what have you been up to? You keep saying that because it wasn't because I didn't talk, but I I think people enjoyed uh, your buddy more than they like. The oh yeah, no, movie. I knew he was gonna have some some stories, and he's got a bunch just because he has been a, a fucking YouTube wrangler, or at least right. I, I don't know if he is like right now, but he was for a while, and he's it's good times, man. Had a lot of. I good was times waiting for the story when he like. Did blow with Kanye West off Kim Kardashian's ass. Did you see his uh, Kanye West's new video that he just like put out? No. It's uh, on Title, which I think is like, <laughs> <Dead>. <laughs> like no one uses it. But I, why tra- didn't they? Do, might as well just put that shit on fucking MySpace. Right. But anyway, he made like these. Um, I don't know if they were wax or what they were, but they look fucking real. Uh, figures of like prominent celebrities. And they're all like naked in bed, like post sex, asleep. And it's like him and uh, Kim and Donald Trump. Donald <laughs> and, Trump? Uh, yep, he's in it. Uh, Taylor Swift is naked. These are all naked people in bed together. Uh, Taylor Swift's in it. Uh, Chris Brown, Rihanna. And they like have like tits out. Like they're all naked. And there's like tits. That Even show. Trump? Trump tits? No, Trump's like face down. Uh, well, not face down, like he's dead, but like you know, sleeping on his stomach. I think he's got like his hand on like as like Rihanna's tit or something. I don't know, dude. It's it's that's, that's pretty weird. It's weird as fuck. But uh, but yeah. Anyway, um, I don't know what that has to do with anything. But I uh, I don't know, man. It's been pretty. You know, work's been pretty crazy. I uh, I took my my foray into uh, smoking meat. I don't know if I told you that I was going to do this, um, but I bought a meat smoker for Father's Day because I had uh, the kid for three days all to myself. Um, so I was like, fuck it. I've, I always wanted to try it because it's really good. You ever had like like that, like like meat that's been in a smoker like all day? Uh, yep. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Yeah, so I bought, I bought one and some hickory chips and all kinds of shit and um, – I made like uh, pulled pork barbecue. Oh, that's good. Like, yeah, I smoked that shit for like uh, twelve hours. Like the kid get up. The kid if, got have up. Have you ever like had six. alligator? <clears throat> yeah, dude, it's so fucking good. You know, I live in Florida, or I'm from Florida. Like yeah, dude, I I had it for the first time like last week. So um, at my at my job um, car dealership, um, this like Creole truck which i wasn't familiar with what creole is it's apparently like it's cajun food cajun food yeah i just didn't know what that term was uh but anyway this truck came by and uh just dropped by our fucking dealership and dude they must have made damn near like a thousand fucking dollars off our fat asses dude that that food was so fucking expensive but goddamn was it good and they're coming back next week by our request like that's how much that's how good this shit was like everybody spent a fuckload of money and then we asked them to come back next week, and they're coming back next week, and everybody's gonna spend a shitload of money again. So, yeah, dude, alligator is good as fuck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I've had um, I haven't had like re- like, you know, like, oh, what kind of alligator did you have? I did you have, I don't like know. fried fried gator tail. Yeah, oh yeah, it was fried. Yeah, it was oh hor- horribly unhealthy for you. I right. had like this alligator gumbo poor boy thing. It, it was so fucking good. Yeah, that's pretty good shit. Yeah, no, we had um And I'm not typically into that kind of stuff. Like I'm kind of like a boring person when it comes to food, but dude, that was so good. Yeah. No, Cajun food is good. Actually, if you want to like up your cook game on pretty much anything you ever make, just buy some Tony Sacheries. It's like in a green little tube seasoning, Creole seasoning, and put that pretty much on everything, anything you could ever think of to make, and it will make whatever that thing is better. Even ice cream. Not really ice cream, but I wouldn't surprise me. I literally put it on everything. Hamburger, chicken, fish, uh, potatoes. Yeah. So, anyway. 
Uh, but yeah, so that came out good as shit. And I was going to do it um, tomorrow, but I we had a house showing last weekend, and the people want to come back tomorrow, so... Which is usually a good sign, right? So yeah. maybe maybe uh, I'll actually sell my fucking house at some point. Um, but yeah, man, that's pretty much it. That and fucking work and playing a shitload of uh, Legion beta. Actually, I didn't think I would because I have never played any WoW beta ever like that much. But I've been playing a lot of like Legion beta. You touched it at all? Uh, not really, no. I mean, I, I played the Fury Warrior just to see the mechanics and I really like them. But uh, I don't know if I'll even play Legion, man. It's uh, when's it coming out? August, uh, late August. Yeah, and the pre-patch I, is like. Yeah, dude, I think that that release date's just not. It's not doing it for you. It's not gonna work for me. I don't think. I think I'm gonna be. I think Crowfall is gonna be in fairly decent testing by then, or close, close enough to where I I wouldn't fuck around with Legion. Um, like and I think you, I'll probably you, still be on the Overwatch hype too. You would you would test Crowfall to the point where you couldn't play other games. Uh, well, no, the Crowfall. So essentially, uh, the Throne. They're calling it the Throne War module or whatever. Uh, basically, all the Crowfall testing right now has been in this like battleground state. That's not what the actual game is going to be. Uh, apparently, towards the end of the summer, they're actually going to have the the campaign worlds and you know the the persistent world testing stuff with like. It will be closer to what the game is actually going to be, apparently. Um, right. So yeah, there's some cool shit with Crowfall that that's coming out here pretty I, soon. I I bought into the fucking testing, like I bought the um, like the the alpha package, and I fucking haven't even used it yet. I you're tried not, to. You're not missing much. I tried. I mean, to. It, it's it's okay, like, it, but it's not the most like fun shit ever. Right. I tried to. I tried to log. I don't know what it was with the server, or if I just uh, messed up like the times or what it was, but I couldn't get in for some reason. Well, the testing is only at certain times. Right. I tried during one of those times, and I couldn't get in for some reason, and I was just like, "Man, fuck it." I'm just yeah, playing. you're not. You're not really missing too much. I mean, basically, all the testing is right now is they're just putting people in a box and saying kill each other while they test the server and latency stuff and class mechanic yeah you're really not missing too much uh i think towards the end of the summer and late fall is when the game is actually going to be closer to what it's actually supposed to be because right now everybody's just been playing uh smash your heads into each other while we work on the server basically uh right. but it's coming together at this point they're they're adding classes pretty rapidly like the druid just came out and they already announced the the myrmidon which looks cool as fuck it's like zarya kind of but, uh, uh <laughs> but meaning in, that it's a MMO, big uh, beast. It's half, uh, it's a half bull, human it's half the, beast. Yeah, ha it's like the the Greek half bull, half human thing, right. and it's got the, a, a Zarya like rage mechanic to where uh, you pop, you know, this enrage on yourself, and you take damage, and it boosts your damage, and you're immune to the damage temporarily until the debuff falls off, or until the buff falls off, and then you they're, they're calling it crashing. Where you are essentially immortal for I don't know whatever the, however long it would be like twenty seconds, and uh, you 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 can take as much damage as you want for twenty seconds, but you take all of that damage all at once after it's over. But apparently you have like cooldowns to mitigate it, and you can like I guess synergize with another class that maybe puts the fifth like a, I don't know fifty percent less damage taken for four seconds buff on you. So I, I like it. I like th that that kind of mechanic and. It looks cool as shit. So, um, I'm getting pretty pumped for Crowfall. I kind of stepped away from it intentionally just because I was, like, obviously waiting for something sucks. So, Overwatch kind of pulled me away. Uh, which is good because the time's going by quicker. Right. Speaking I, of Overwatch. I haven't actually played Overwatch in... Oh, man. I don't know. It's been like a week. I don't think I've played it. Yeah, I mean, but speaking of it, what? Well, speaking mode? of it, I mean, we haven't bitched about Widowmaker in a really long time, and I wanted to address that. Okay. How much more fun is the fucking game now after that patch? Oh my god. The game is so much better. Right. I'm so yes. happy. I'm so fucking happy. I got exactly didn't like, what I wanted. They didn't, like, nerf her into oblivion either. Yeah, you she's still I mean? viable, but, I mean, 
so the big thing that people I so the the uh, the casual plebs think that it's just the damage nerf that did it. No, it's the scope nerf. Um, right, the, the animation. The top widowmakers were constantly doing that animation scope cancel, and it was giving them crazy mobility and crazy vision. At no penalty. Right. So that that was the big nerf. It wasn't the damage nerf. It was the scope nerf. Right. Dude, the game is so much more enjoyable. I'm so fucking happy. I'm so fucking happy. Yeah, well, they, they needed to... I mean, I think that was the, the, the key behind, behind, like, delaying competitive mode, right? Like oh, they dude, wanna... competitive would have been AIDS with Widowmaker the way she was. Right. So I think, I mean, that's probably a smart move that they delayed it as much as they have. But aren't yeah. they... They're t- changing a couple other things in competitive mode, too, right? Like, I just saw Kaplan's post... But I can't remember what the like little wickets were about it. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. excited for competitive. Um, I can't think of any like ridiculous balance problems. I mean, the only thing I think that's a little annoying is that Reinhardt is is so mandatory. Uh, he's he's not, not mandatory. He's close. Push, he's about, he's about as close to mandatory as you can get um, for payload maps. You can you can do it without him, but he's just so fucking good. Uh, and he, I don't know if he's OP. It's just that that shield mechanic, like the shield is just good. Like it's just so fucking good. Um, but I think that's okay. But he's though. not he's not like for King of a Hill. He's not mandatory, but he's still really fucking good for King of a Hill. Um, right. And was well, shield is what two thousand HP, right? So yeah, it's like it just gives like you maybe it's because I'm a Zarya player and I'm a little biased, but. The Reinhardt shield gives your team so much more like staying power in a team fight. Like you're able to just stay alive so much better. And since I'm a Zarya player, the the more you stay alive, the better it is for me. Like the longer the team fight is, the more I can build up and snowball. So maybe I'm a little biased in that regard because I love playing with Reinhardts for that reason. Uh, but he's good. Um, and the number one biggest problem is the Mercy Res. Uh, Mm, yeah. it's too it's too fast it charges like i like i like the ability i don't want the ability to be changed i think it's clutch i think it's cool but dude it, it is up way too frequently like holy fuck like yeah. I, I think if you don't if you don't down the mercy first the team's coming back all the time yeah I, I, and i just like i get that that's like a skilled like gameplay thing like you know you got to get the mercy or that's gonna happen right and i get that but I, th- I think it's too much. I think her character is too... Like, her power is too much around that ultimate. And maybe she needs to be buffed in other areas. But I think that her res should be about the same charge time as Zarya's ultimate. Which has a, a fairly slow charge time unless you're face-fucking the enemy team. And right. then it's really quick. Uh, so I think it should be much slower. And maybe they give Mercy some more healing per second or maybe a little more health or some shit like that if she's underpowered with that res taking longer. But I think it's just silly how quick it's up. Like, holy fuck, it is up almost all the time, it seems like. Yeah. Like, every team fight, it's up. And if you watch the pros, they just play around it. They're just like, well, gonna have to wipe them twice. Right, exactly. I've been watching a lot of... uh... I still watch a lot of Seagull stuff on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. he's a perfect example. So when he has a pocket Mercy healing him, he always gets rezzed. Have you noticed that? Like, whenever yeah. he dies, which is kind of rare, he's always, he always gets insta rezzed. Oh, he's yeah. That's fucking... a lot of his criticism, though, is that everybody, like, shits on him. They're like, you always got a fucking Mercy in your pocket. And he's like, uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I mean... That's kind of, I, I mean, Mercy's good at that. Especially, like, well, I know he released that Farrah video, which was bonkers. Have you seen that? The one where There's, he basically 6v1s their team. Yeah, and he's got on, a pocket Mercy. The, yeah, he's got a pocket on, Mercy that's damage butt boosting him and healing him. And people on, that are giving him shit for that are stupid. Because that Farrah Mercy combo is so annoying, when they're right. especially when they're good. Like, it's yeah. really hard to deal with, even as, like, Soldier. Right. You almost need like two so like if they're really good at it, you almost need like two soldiers or a soldier and McCree. That was the loudest swallow I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, did you oh, just drink? Sorry about that. You, yeah, you, I drank. I, I drank some water. I, uh, uh <laughs> I, you know what I used to do? This side story. I, I can make this like 
swallow hard air noise in my throat that kind of sounds like a fart. <laughs> I used to do, do that in school. Huh? Do it. Uh, hang on, let me see. I gotta move my mic. Do you, what the fuck? <laughs> so, I used ha- to do that in school all the time. Do that again. That's not exactly like a fart. <laughs> Dude, that's really weird. That's what fucking just, weird just as shit. Try it. Just put air in your mouth and swallow it really hard. All right, so you do, do you breathe in deep and then swallow? Yeah, or, basically. Basically, you breathe in deep and kind of hold your breath and then just sort of like swallow really hard. Oh, shit, I just did it. I, let me put my throat like really close to the mic. Maybe it'll pick it up. Yeah, kind of like that. Uh, it's probably not. It's not as loud you'll as yours. Burp, you'll but, burp after too if you do it enough. But yeah, just like. What a, what a retarded. This is, this is high quality <laughs> podcast material I mean, here. The, the people <laughs> that fucking listen to us. Probably don't care about, about all that shit, but uh, but That's yeah, another thing to, uh, to, to put on the autistic list. <laughs> of, uh, I had to do something fucking dumb in the first uh, what twenty minutes of the of the podcast, but yeah, um, yeah, man. Like I said, dude, I uh, a lot of my friends too. I mean, like have died. Well, I don't want to say have died off, but a lot of like my six pre made that I was playing with in Overwatch. They're all they're mostly like back into WoW, like getting ready for Legion and other things. Like uh, oh, you know. Yeah, I've got know, a pretty steady like, group I'm playing with. Um Have you did you do any of the artifact weapon quests? Fuck no. Dude, I'm I'm not gonna be honest, I'm not a big lore guy, like at all. Like I, I don't read quest text, I, I use auto turn. I've heard it's very good. Yeah, so like it's fucking cool because like I'll just give you an example, like Frost DK, right? Like I want to. Oh, yeah, I heard the DK one is sick. Like Tyrion Forging is a Death Knight now. Spoiler alert. Uh, kind of, sorta. But you like the Frost DK one is you go to ICC, right? Like so, what it is is you go in there, you do the Broken Isle scenario, and in the in the beta right now, after you do it on one character, you can just skip it, which I fucking hope is true on live. But anyway, uh, you get summoned to your artifact quest, right? It sends you to ICC. And the Lich King uh, starts talking to you. And not like Arthas, the Lich King, but like the dude who took over. Who is it? Uh, Bolvar. Bolvar starts talking to you. So he's like all red-eyed and shit, Lich King. Um, and he basically, like, you have to, like, run around ICC and, like, pick up shards of Frostmourne, which is pretty cool. And then you assemble two swords from, like, the pieces of Frostmourne in this, like, forge. Um and that's a huge summary of it, but I mean, yeah, that, that, it's, it's like, cool as fuck. Yeah, I'm down for yeah, that. Yeah, the uh, the mage one you like learn about. So like in the, you you saw the oh, we talked about the Warcraft movie. So the Aladai being that like no one knew anything about. Like I did the uh, I started the mage one last night, and like he shows up, and there's like a lot of a lot of it is cool because you're like in these places and talking to these characters, but you don't have to actually like read a bunch of shit. You know what yeah, I mean? It's, to it's, understand what's going on. It's throwing you into the lore without making you, like, read and, like, it's throwing it. It's putting it in your face to where it's, like, enjoyable. Correct. Which I really like. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. Uh, yeah. So, anyway, so, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I, I don't yeah, think well, I'm going to I definitely needed stuff. more of that fan. Like, that's one of the things they're doing with Legion that I think is good. Like, they're making a very solid effort to bring back the class fantasy and, like, the the RPG element of the MMORPG, which kind of faded away there for a while. Right. Uh, which is good. So the class order halls things are, are kind of cool too. Like the Paladin one is the Sanctuary of Light in like Eastern Plague Lands. And then the um, the Demon Hunter one, you like jump off of Dalaran and you like float down to the Demon Hunter one with your little glide thing. Um, so those are pretty cool. And then the... Um, the mythic dungeons are going to be tough, dude. Like, I've done a couple dungeons on the beta just to kind of, uh, more so than anything, see if I wanted to waste any time on a demon hunter, like, when it goes live. Because, like, I'll have one, but I didn't know if it was, like, good or not, you know? So I kind of wanted to play it a couple runs just to see if I'd like it. Um, and uh, they're going to be challenging. Like, the mythic plus dungeons with all, like, the mechanics. Like, have you seen these at all? Like, the affixes that they get? I've seen I've seen it a little bit where you like sometimes the like if you have a certain aff- affix affix whatever like the trash mobs will like rape face and 
I think it's yeah. cool. Enraged, like every mob enrages at 30% is yeah, one of them. Yeah, I like that stuff. Like low threat. So, but. yeah, all that shit's in there. So, uh, and the I don't I don't know, dude. Like, I think it's going to be, I, I think WAD was the biggest failure, like, in WoW history. Like, it was Oh, garbage. yeah. No, that's, that's, that's undeniable. Like. Yeah. Complete garbage. I don't think. I, I don't think anybody, like, a lot of people have their favorite expansions, but I think it's not even a question what everybody's least favorite expansion is. Like, I was one, like, there were some people that really liked Mop, and there were some people that really hated Mop, but I don't know anybody that really likes WAD. Like, right. I'd I think say that's, that's just the word. And I mean, the numbers show. They lost half of Wad. their players in fucking, what, three months? Come on. Wad. Uh, you know, that's the thing, too, is like, I was flying around Mop, and like, uh, you know, like all this Legion stuff and Warlords and all these same characters, that's kind of cool. But I hope one day, like, we can do something that's completely fucking different, too. You know what I mean? Because, like, like war, war, I mean, uh, Mop had, like, some really cool, like, art. You know what I mean? And, like, the zones were different and, like, everything was different. You know what I mean? Like, it's, I'm, I don't, I didn't really, like, wasn't the biggest fan of it while I was in it. But, like, just having it in the game, I think, is cool because, like, it's just so much, like, different than, like, Eastern Kingdom fucking... The other thing I think is kind of weird is that for a new player, like, like you could be in the same city, Dalaran, in two completely different locations and expansions. Like, I think that's kind of confusing. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they just used Dalaran because they ran out of time and they were like, fuck it, we need a city. Yeah, I thought that was kind of lazy. A lot of people were giving me shit about that. I made a video talking about the stuff I didn't like about WAD, and I thought it was kind of dumb that they were reusing Dalaran again. Like, when are they going to make an actual new city? They haven't made Uh, one since Dalaran and Wrath. um, And even that was kind of half-assed compared to Shat. I mean, they made, well, I don't think you can really call, like, War Spear... No, that's city. that's bullshit. That's garbage. Like an, so was the mop in. shit. The mop shit was garbage. I'm talking about like a new Orgrimmar, a new Stormwind, a new Shat, like a real fucking cool city. Yeah, they haven't done it in. in yeah, and the even Dalaran was and Wrath like, was a little bit underwhelming. It wasn't that bad. Like it was cool having the sewer area and stuff, but very condensed. Um, wasn't that great? Right. So no, I, I agree with you. Uh. Yeah, even like the mop one is just a big ass building. The mop one is the laziest garbage ever. <laughs> the mop well, one. Well, it wasn't even a city. I fucking it hated it. Didn't have mop. trainers. It didn't have like. Dude, it was just like a rectangle where you could run fast in. It was just like, what is this shit? Like yeah. you can sprint really quick in here. I don't know. I thought that was dumb as fuck. <laughs> I really, I, I, I really did not like mop. I don't know why people thought it was a fucking good expansion. I think it was pretty bad. Uh Ugh. Yeah, I can see that. The skill cap of the game was very high in MOP, though. I will say that. Like, the good players, because there were so many abilities, the good players really stood out from the bad ones, whereas the ability pruning and WAD lowered the skill cap pretty significantly. But I was kind of okay with the ability pruning, especially when it came to, like, the warrior. Like, the banner shit on the warriors. Did you play a warrior in MOP or know about the mechanics? Uh, yeah, warriors I mean, had like three fucking flags you could put down. Like, warriors yeah, got out of control. I only with used, the amount of- I used mocking banner and I used the the what was the other one? The, the I'm glad skull they banner. took that shit out, dude. Skull banner. I fucking did not like the banners <laughs> yeah. and mop. I thought it was just like it's like really do I really need these flags I put down? Like, I get it that it's a cool like high skill mechanic, but like having to clunkily intervene in a banner out of roots just like dude this is ugh. like i was okay with them taking that shit out right i don't miss no. those fucking banners you know the game plays like with all the different animations that they have in legion like the, cuz they've changed pretty much everybody's animations the game feels a lot different like yeah the warrior is so sick with the new animations yeah yeah pretty good um but i'm just like the game in general like I think some people are gonna like it. Some people probably won't. I mean, one thing I didn't like, I don't really? like, is they um. Well, they changed like max zoom out camera, and this is like a a thing that people are like up and they uh, pruned a lot of like UI things, so like you can't zoom out as far as you used to be able to, which is kind of wait. I don't, is that just a UI thing that they like hasn't been re implemented? Because I 
Mm -hmm. You used to have to do that with a script back in the day. You used to have to type it in in a macro. Yeah, as far as I understand it, they actually took that out, though. You can't even, like, script it. Like, it's... Why would they take that out? I don't know. I don't know. They did a lot of, quote-unquote, UI pruning. So we'll see how the I game actually I think that'll come back. Up. It might. Hopefully it does. I think that might be just a thing that is not currently, like, in the beta. Like, that might have been a feature that has temporarily been axed because it was, like, fucking up some other shit. Or something. I just wouldn't see them getting rid of that. Yeah. Who knows? Who yeah. knows? Um, but yeah, Wad has some cool stuff about it, but ultimately I think I'm just done with the theme park MMO for now. Like, maybe a new one will come out in the next, like, five years, because there's nothing on the horizon for MMOs. Especially, like, theme park MMOs, like the traditional WoW, SWOTOR, Wildstar style of game. Uh, with... Right the rating and PVE and all that bullshit. Uh, so it's going to be a while before another big one comes out. Maybe five years. Because like, there's like not even the whispers of anything coming out. Well, I, uh, we had that one comment that was like, check out that Gloria Victus game. That's uh no. <laughs> did, you, did you look at that? No. <laughs> I, I think I've seen it before. That's like, it's got like the weird sword fighting stuff. Uh, but again, that's not, that's not like a triple A MMO. Like, all of the stuff that's coming out is indie stuff. Indie stuff, smaller scale stuff, which is fine. Um, I think I'm done with the AAA stuff for now. I'm I'm pretty intrigued by, like, Crowfall and more of the EVE Online style of game. Right. I saw somebody try to play EVE uh, the other day, and I just, I don't know, for whatever reason, I never could get into EVE. I yeah. think it's the combat. I think I think that's what Crowfall's trying to do. Is they're trying to make the Eve Online experience that's actually like fun to play from a gameplay perspective. I think that's what they're trying to do. Because Eve Online is cool as fuck, uh, unless like you're actually playing it. If that makes sense. Right. Like you can do so much badass, cool shit in Eve, and there's so many awesome stories that come out of Eve. But if you watch somebody play it, most of the time it is not exciting. I right. think Crowfall is going to have that too. I don't think Crowfall is going to be a big Twitch game at all because there's going to be some a lot of downtime and a lot of like theory crafting and that kind of shit. Uh, but it will be more enjoyable than Eve, like because it's got it's got action combat. So, right. Speaking of action combat, <laughs> Wattstar still hanging on with the steam, kind of sort of. Yeah, I wonder how that's doing for him. It's 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 doing. They've got a. Did you see that they hired um. Um, John Brown and fucking Bashiak. So, uh, Zarum and Bashiak, both from Blizzard, are now like NCSoft, uh, car miners for Wildstar. Oh, apparently a new teaser for Red Moon Terror came out. Oh, yeah, that's on the PTR. And they just did some like balancing. You just got intrigued, didn't you? You're like, hmm. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's all on the PTR. I think you can go do it like now if you want to. Go check it I out. I wonder how Enigma's doing. I, I, I wonder if they are still you're playing. Hearing it, you're hearing it right here. Here comes Zyback popping back into Wildstar. No, I, I don't think they're even playing anymore. I checked Wildstar logs because... I don't know why I still check Wildstar logs. I don't know. I just it's find it, I find it interesting. And I didn't see them. They haven't uploaded any new logs in like two weeks, so it makes me wonder if they quit. If anybody in Enigma is watching or knows, I'm just curious. Let's see, Enigma. Uh, Enigma Entity NA. They haven't posted a log. And, and keep in mind, they post logs for every single raid they do. Like, if you go back. They haven't posted anything in two weeks. And their last post on the website is, holy fuck, we need people. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, they probably... Yeah, yeah, I mean... Like, I wonder if they quit? Um, I mean, it wouldn't surprise me. What's that? Like, who are you rating for that? Like, here's yeah, the like, thing. Yeah, like, why are you still doing it? Right. Like, I don't know. That's that's why I can't get into a lot of, like, some other MMOs, like, might be, like, so I still, I actually updated my SWOTOR client today, and I was like, I might check out that Galactic Starfighter thing again, just to, just to, like, see what it's about, you know? Because, I mean, that was... That was really cool. I think I think like you I think you and I have both said like if we ever were to do another one that might be the one we dip our toes back into yeah. but uh 
Yeah. So I don't know, man. Um, that's the thing is like, w- if you have no friends that play a game, I find it really hard to like stay motivated in the game because it's like, and this sounds terrible, but like you can't show off your cool shit to anybody. You know what I mean? Like you just kind of play it for yourself. And I guess there are a lot of games are like that, but I feel like for MMOs, like part of it, part of the experience is like having your friends on there and then like, you know, being like, I'm good at this game. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. Personal like, player prestige. It's a, a like who the fuck a, are you playing a, it for? Like, I guess yourself. I guess some people are going to play. Yeah, no, no, like you're not wrong. Um, that's a big reason why people play MMOs is to fucking be good and stand out and have. Uh, again, this is a this is a phrase Dante coined, but I think it's a, a good phrase. Personal player prestige. You know, you stand out. You're the guy with the sick armor that not very many people have, and people will see that and they're like, "Wow, that's pretty fucking sick." Where'd you get that? Like, I know back in the day, I was one of the first people on the server to get the Winter Spring Frost Saber. Which was a fucking massive grind. It was me and one other guy on the server had it. Wait, was that a was that a rep thing yeah. or is that a uh... yes? It was a rep thing with the Winter Spring Frost Sabers. They fucking nerfed it into the ground and made it easy as fuck to get. Fuck Blizzard. That's one of the reasons. Oh, Blizzard doing that kind of shit really irritated me. Like they could have made a reskinned model of it, and that would have been fine. You know, let the people okay. that did it the old school way that was way more time consuming, let them have the unique skin and slightly change it. That's all you got to do. Maybe, well, maybe you know, recolor it a little bit. Nope, you know same what, fucking model. Assholes. They're, uh, well, they're doing now is they've got like, so a lot of the prestigious mounts, they're doing like the reskin, like kind of like that. Um, yeah, well, they didn't fucking do it for the Winter Spring yeah, Frost Saber. Those but dumb what they're cunts. also doing Fuck is them. if you look at a lot of the artifact weapons, some of the baddest ass skins for like all of the weapons are the fucking prestige PVP weapons. So like, you know, with the prestige mechanic, right? Like you get all your talents and then you can basically prestige just like in Call of Duty. Yeah. Um a lot of the like really badass uh artifact skins are PVP only. So uh, Yeah, I like that prestige system. It's pretty cool. It gives people a reason to do battlegrounds and Well, you know, I mean, fuck especially around too, with like, casual PVP. There's no other way to get that skin. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and like, no, if good. you ever want to transmog that again, it's kind of like the the mounts, right? The um, the do uh, a glad mounts. You know what yeah. I mean? So I think it'll be good. I mean, I'm I'm fuck. I may actually like do some PvP if like the skins look that good. And uh, speaking about um, just a little more Legion talk, dude. Vengeance Demon Hunters, the tanking one, is fucking cool as shit. Probably my favorite tank. I haven't messed around with that, but I have been playing. I have played the Havoc. Um, it's fun. You still doing the uh, the the Vengeful Retreat fucking Fell Rush combo? Uh, I've, I haven't. I don't. I haven't played it in so long that I don't know if they've changed it. But I hope that's a viable spec because it's fun. It's very fun to have that to keep that buff up. That's right. the way the the spec works. Is you just keep that um, whatever that buff is called that you get every time you do a Vengeful Retreat or Fell Rush. And you just zip. You got a twenty percent damage buff, and you just zip around like crazy and keep that up constantly. It's pretty fun. Yeah, it's the and you get the fell rush resets with that one ability too. Yeah, exactly. the uh, The vengeance one, you get like you can light. You, it's like ammo aura. Like you can light yourself on fire basically, and that's like your AOE threat sort of thing. Dot, and you get sigils you can put on the ground like a D and D. You get a uh, basically a heroic leap. Where like so you know the the havoc one is the is the sprint the rush thing where you just like shoot forward. Yep. The uh when you get when you go vengeance it's a uh, heroic leap. When you so you metamorphosize or whatever you transform and you like heroic leap slam down on the ground and you do like a little AOE splash damage. Yeah. Well, I mean the havoc has that as well. Um, I don't think when it does. When you do metamorphosis, yeah, you you pick where you metamorphosis no, to. No, right when you when you hit metamorphosis. This yeah. is on a 20-second CD. Oh, okay. This is actually, they replaced the, you still have, actually, you don't have that. When you hit your metamorphosis as a vengeance, you just pop. You just go. Oh, they and took it's that more, out? It's more, for vengeance, yes, because you have this other heroic oh, okay. thing. So, um, a little different, but uh, still good. Um, yeah, it's going to be fun. Like, I'm pretty stoked about it. But anyway, uh, man, we got, we got a, we got to talk about the the thing yeah, that you, happened. Did man. you fucking look at <laughs> look at your shit? 
Did I? <laughs> Did I look at my shit? What Your shit? stocks? Oh, I bought actually. So, well, let's talk about I'm the actual. Be buying some first. shit when I get paid here this week. That's I for did. sure. Um, we got to talk about the the actual event before we talk about that. Oh, I thought that was the event. What, what's the what's the other event? E three. Do you know why the stocks did that? Oh yeah, because the fucking UK left the EU. Yeah, that event. We should talk about that. Sure. I mean, like, unless you're not like. No, I no. Mean, I, well, I, I that was a topic are, I like, had. Go, go for it. So, <laughs> I guess the best way to like, I, okay, if people don't know, like, because I didn't know what it was, like, so there's this thing called Brexit, right? Where basically, um, England, Britain is voting to leave the European Union. And <laughs> so they they do, right? Like they they do vote to leave. Fucking D Trump is over in Sweden. I think it was Wallace? Sweden, right? Or was it Switzerland? No, Scotland, Sweden. I think. Scotland. I think. Uh, I don't fucking know. I'm a retard. I think it's Scotland. One of those things that start with an S. And he was uh over there and he was like um just arrived today. People are going nuts over the vote like uh, they took their country back, blah blah blah. But the fucking so he posts that on Twitter. But the funny thing is, is that yeah. they they overwhelmingly voted to stay in where he was. Like not yeah, they're to thinking leave. about yeah, they're thinking about uh, what is it seceding seceding from the from the UK because they want to stay in, right? As they should. Like there is no reason for that. You know the, the and this is why Trump loves it. Because the reason that they wanted to stay in was uh, immigration or, or get out is immigration. It's because uh, part of it. I, I, there's some other things as well, but a lot of it was the whole Muslim the, thing. Yeah, the overwhelming reason. Because economically, well, it yeah, is, the Muslim thing was what pushed it over the top. That's for sure. Uh, there are some other things, but that's that's a big one. I mean, it's kind of like ec- saying like the Civil War like wasn't over slavery, but it's like that was a pretty big reason. <laughs> Yeah, but economically, it made no sense for them to do that. Like, it was just bad. All um, so there, there's two sides to this a little bit. Uh, and I'm not an expert on this, obviously, but uh, I have seen some, like, reasons for why they wanted they wanted out. And a lot of it is they don't have to pay money for the bailouts for Spain, Italy, and Greece. Because Spain, True. Italy, and Greece, like, went off the fucking deep end. And all the other countries in the EU are having to pay them insane amounts of money. And obviously, if the UK isn't in there anymore, they don't have to pay all that money. Um, right. But there's also, um, they don't have the free trade agreements either. So, like, part of yeah. the tenets of part of the tenets of the EU is that, so the immigration thing is people can travel across borders. And it's not really, like, a big deal. Uh-huh. Uh, the other thing is you can free trade across borders without like import export taxes and shit. So now those are like implemented again, and they have Britain has to, over the course of the next maybe even decade, renegotiate all of their trade agreements with the rest of the. It's going EU. to be a lot of paperwork, but so here's the thing: is that they have to still play ball with the UK, because there's one thing that the UK's got that. They don't, and it, nobody else has, and that's bad the, teeth. The UK is the supplier of all the food over there. It's like seventy plus percent of all of the the agriculture comes out of the UK. So it's not like they're gonna like stop fucking trading. Like, no, no, they're not gonna stop. But it's it's not gonna be it's not gonna be great in the short term for yeah. uh, for UK uh, businesses. So oh yeah, no, the short term is most definitely going to be pretty bleak. But I'm not going to be one of these people that's like, I don't know. I just see so many people like banging the drums saying like how horrible of a thing this is. And maybe it's just my nature to kind of go against the grain. But I don't think it's going to be the end of the fucking world. Um, no, I mean, it'll come back. So speaking of uh, end of the world. So once this thing happened, um, <laughs> the, the graphs, <laughs> the UF stock markets went. Dude, and, American uh, Airlines, those poor fucks. Guess who? Uh, guess who? Uh, so I don't think that's going to drop much more. I mean, it was a pretty big drop. No, I, I think uh, the, I think it might take a while for it to recover, but I don't think it's going to fucking tank much more. I think right. that the timing of it was good. Uh, that it Friday. happened on a Friday, and if this would have happened on a fucking Monday, though, oh man, it probably would have been pretty bad. I uh, so 
my stock, I owned a lot of Duke. I pretty much consolidated everything into Duke, which is really high right now. It's like damn near $83. I bet that didn't get hit at all, really. It went up. Yeah. It went up a lot. And I, well, a dollar. And so I've been doing a strategic pullback, like a uh, ring the register kind of deal. So like I've, I had uh, like 100 shares and I sold like 20 when it was at like $82. And I sold 20 more yesterday when it hit like $83. So I'm like trying to like, you know, cash in the profits so that a little bit so that if, you know, when it comes back down, I can just rebuy basically. Um, and I looked yesterday and uh, I don't, I hate Bank of America. I fucking, I just, as a company, like I despise them completely, but uh, pretty, pretty decent stock that's been over $15 the majority of the year sank like 8%, dude, <laughs> like a yeah. lot. So what's, what's interesting is that, um, the S and P five hundred didn't tank for a while. Like I was looking at it last uh, yesterday, and I was like, "Wait, why the fuck is this up three percent?" And I was like, "This." I even tweeted about it. I was like, "What is the fucking deal with this? Like, why is this up?" And then, what do you know? It fucking tanked like eight or nine percent, like instantly. I guess people yeah. like caught onto the news or something, but whatever. It doesn't fucking bother me. Yeah, if you're out there trying to invest, uh. D- do always it now. buy in, always buy into this shit like when, yeah, when people if you're, if you're freak thinking out about getting into it like my my older brother is thinking about buying some stock and dude the world just gave him a gift see that's the thing too is that um a lot of this stuff isn't like because these companies are bad a lot of it is because the r- the majority of trading is not done from like dudes like me and you buying stock the majority of trading is fucking computers that just buy and sell thousands of times a day on like micro cent changes to make vast sums of money. So like when some shit like this happens, you know, the computers do all this fucking selling basically. And that's what drives these crazy swings. It's not like, you know what I mean? It's not fucking Warren Buffett. I don't think this crazy swing was completely because of the computers. I think a lot of it's because people got emotional. Well, that, I mean, that certainly contributes but I'm, but I'm saying the majority of trading is done automatically. Because, like, you know, you think about it, like, fucking Ted, who runs a mutual fund, and even if he has, like, you know, six partners that do well, it. Well, yeah, like, you've got it, these big conglomerates like Vanguard and Fidelity and shit that manage, like, big index funds and big mutual funds and whatever. Uh, and, I mean, that's the way index funds and mutual funds work is that, you know, there's a fucking million people that are all managed by one fucking guy. Or, you know, a few people. Right. So, yeah. Yep. So, anyway. But, yeah, good time, man. I bought a... I didn't buy a lot because I, I don't... You know, I'm not crazy. But I um, I bought um, 500 bucks, So, like, 40 shares Bank of America. And I figure I'll make probably about a quick 10%, 50 buck profit. Yeah, I'm going to buy in when I get paid this week. Some I'll probably just get more of what I got. I was thinking about doing, like, European stocks, but... Oof. I, I don't know. I, w- I want to buy into this shit that's got low expense ratios. So the European shit, owning European stock as an American is kind of, you pay a premium for it. So I don't think that premium, even though I could snag some stuff pretty cheap, I think in the long term, I want to keep my expenses as low as possible. So I'll probably just keep buying the, the low cost shit. Yeah. I mean, you know, I was going to buy some VOO. Because it, it dropped, and then that's really low cost. But I uh, that's as low cost as it fucking gets. Yeah, but point, I, I I have like point zero zero five percent. It's like twenty bucks every thousand bucks or something. It's nothing. Right, but yeah. So I um, you know, I uh, what was I gonna say? I I I want something a little higher yield because like those index funds are like two percent t- t- uh, typically. And I think that still pays like two percent. I want more like what the dividend? Yeah, yeah. I want, I want more like uh, yeah, four. That's kind of low. Four and Duke is Duke gives me that. So I don't know. I'm a big uh, Duke person. Yes, yeah, so I don't give a fuck about dividends. I don't <laughs> care. Like I'm so far out from actually needing and cashing out that it's kind of irrelevant. Um, which is why I don't give a fuck about this thing. Because yeah, like, this but is like, something like this is going to happen again like a hundred times by the time I'm forty and fifty and get to the divi- point where I start taking stuff out. But dividends are uh, you should though, because I mean like 
So if you have well, the way, yeah. I mean, the way it's a trade-off. You know, stocks that pay good dividends don't have the same growth. True, but you know, I mean, some of them, you can find some of them. you you can find a balance. I mean, like if you you should not buy. So if you've got a if you've got a stock that's yielding like five plus percent, there's probably something weird about it, right? Like there's not a lot of stocks that pay that much dividend that are like fundamentally like you know what I mean? Like you can find I mean you can find like forty percent dividend stocks, but you know realize that that shit comes out of the share price every time they pay that, and also like there's a you know companies can't afford to pay that much in fucking stocks. So, yeah, I mean, the S&P 500 dividends vary a bit. Like, I think it's gone up to, like, 11% before. So, it really just depends on what the fuck's going on. Uh, but it's low right now, and it's probably going to stay low it's for like 2%, a yeah. fucking while. Um, but, I again, it's whatever. I don't, I don't particularly care. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, uh... Clinton uh, has her fucking lead on uh, on your boy by like double digits now. Oh shit! I know, man. The She'd games have just begun, though. The games have just begun. Uh, yeah. I, I'm, 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 can't wait for that to really start ramping up. Man, do you think that? Did we talk about this last week? Do you think that they could? I bet they could sell pay per view tickets to the fucking first Clinton Trump debate, and it yeah. would actually sell out. Oh yeah. Oh, it's going to be fucking glorious, dude. It's going to be such a shit show. It's going to be great. <laughs> yeah. I don't know, man. I don't I, yeah. I don't know. I've seen a lot of uh, growing support for uh Mr. Johnson on my like I've seen social. that too. Yeah. I wonder I wonder what he's polling at right now. Um But yeah, I I don't I might I might vote for him, dude. I might I might I might go for the Johnson. Well, I mean, he's definitely a better, better candidate than the other two, that's yeah. Not he's really weird though. Much, though. You know, yeah, he's, he's a bit of a weirdo, but still a better candidate than fucking Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. That's agree. for sure. Are you gonna vote for him? Uh, fucking, I don't know. I'm probably just gonna be lazy and not vote like the piece Good of job. shit citizen I am. Good job. Yep, doing my my duty. Yep. Apparently, yeah. if you if you vote, you have a higher chance of being called for jury duty or some shit. I don't know about that, but that's what I've heard. I'm pretty sure that's. I don't know. I don't. I would. I wouldn't mind doing jury duty. Dude, fuck that. I have other shit I want to do in my goddamn life. It's not like Law and Order where you get some shit that's interesting. No, you're gonna get some fucking obvious slam dunk piece of shit. Fucking no life. That yeah. I mean, of course. But I don't know. I mean, I. I find that kind of shit interesting to do just to, to do once. I like to do in my life, I like to do things once a lot of time. So apparently a good way to uh I don't know what it's called. Oh shit, there's a term for it. Apparently a good way to get out of jury duty is to ask about um god damn it, let me google it. Jury oh. finds someone guilty but doesn't punish them. Fuck, what's it called? Um, uh, the law you won't be told. Shit. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Jury, jury nullification. Yeah, apparently all you need to do if you want to get out of jury duty is ask about jury nullification. And this is something that the courts, like, don't want you to know about because apparently it's a big pain in the ass for them whenever this happens. But essentially what it is, is when the jury finds you guilty finds the person guilty, but decides not to punish them. It's like a really weird, like, fringe thing. Uh, Jury, when, when, is that, when is that last time that happened? It, uh, apparently it happens every now and then, but they just, like, apparently if you even ask, like, hey, can you explain jury nullification to me? They're, they just fucking throw you out. Uh, of course, because, well, the attorneys, you know, agree that you're not, like, someone that they fucking want. On yeah, so team. that's a good that's a good tip. For all you motherfuckers who don't want to do this shit either. Right. It's uh, also good to drop racial slurs. Uh, that'll get you thrown out too. Especially if it's like a black guy that's about to get tried and you're like, you know, nig this and nig that. <laughs> you're not gonna get uh you're not gonna get selected. And here's the definition. Jury nullification. When the defendant is one hundred percent beyond a reasonable doubt guilty, but the jurors also think he shouldn't be punished, 
the jury can nullify the law and let him go free. Interesting. Yeah. You know what I, I just saw? Actually, this was weird. So I'm not sure if there's ever been a precedent for this, but there was a guy who basically like I don't he he like treated his wife like such shit like over the course of their 11 year not even his wife but his like girl, common law wife over the course of their 11 year relationship and she felt like trapped and uh, he caused her to have like mental issues she killed herself and he's being tried for murder because what? she killed herself yeah yeah that is actually a, that's a thing here I'll find it hang on I don't know about that. Uh, I'm sure the guy is a piece of shit, but like, come murder on. Murder for suicide. This is a new article. Hang on. Uh, where the fuck is it? Hang on, I'll try to find it. Yank. His name was like Yank or something. It was on Yahoo. I'm, I'll find it. Keep talking about stuff, and I'm gonna find this article. But yeah, I was like, what the hell? Like, I don't think that ever has been a um, precedent. And they basically said that like he abused her, and like, here you go. Where's Skype? Skype, Skype. Here we go. Bam. It says, man charged with murder after his ex-girlfriend commits suicide to escape the relationship in rare case, says prosecutor. Prosecutor charged Minnesota man for murder and the suicide death of his ex-girlfriend, alleging that he harassed and stalked her to the point that she killed herself. She was 28, uh, had two children with this dude, 11-year relationship. She killed herself on December 17th. The two were culturally married. I don't know what the fuck that means. In 2010, and yeah, the prosecutor says he's aware such charges may be unprecedented in Minnesota or elsewhere. We put a lot more scrutiny into charging this case than a typical case. We know there are going to be challenges and questions. We plan to have our ducks in a row. I believe Mr. Vang's conduct directly contributed to the death of his partner. Mr. Vang was clearly aware of the precarious state of his partner's emotions following her hospitalizations. Apparently, he like punched her in the head and she had like a mental thing. And he continued his relentless contacts with her until her death. She doesn't look bad. She looks fuckable. <laughs> she looks like about a, like a six and a half. Six. She looks like somebody that at one time was on the cast of Orange is the New Black. <laughs> wow. <laughs> doesn't she? Uh, I've seen that show. And I can see her. I see where it's coming from. Yeah. She looks like she could be like the Latina that's got like a, an attitude. Right, not the one with the fucking Cro Magnon unibrow. <laughs> like one of the yeah, exactly, like one of the other ones. Yeah. Yeah, I've only seen like one episode, so I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, but That's a good show, dude. Uh, it's, you want to talk about E three? People were asking us to talk about it. Did you a, anything spark your interest about E three? I know it's kind of a while ago, but uh Um There are some really cool fucking VR games on the on the horizon. Oh, see, I don't give a fuck about VR. I'm just saying the new Batman is uh, v- Resident Evil 7 VR. I mean, there's going to be a lot of stuff. Uh, I don't know, dude. The Horizon Zero Dawn thing looks cool. That looks like a fucking crazy game. Yeah, that looks fun. It's like... Um, PS4 exclusive though, right? I think. Uh, I don't know. Um, maybe it is. But for all you guys wondering what the Horizon Zero Dawn is, it's like essentially... Un- not Uncharted. Uh, what's the name? Oh, Fuck. Oh god damn it! I forgot the name of the game. It's Don't like, yourself. oh my god, how am I how am I fucking this up? It's not Uncharted. It's uh, Far Cry. It's like Far Cry, but like well, it's third person, futuristic. Though. Yeah, uh, yeah. Is it third person? Yeah, I yeah. guess it, Far Cry is first person. That's right. But it's like open world. It looks more witchery. To yeah. Me. Oh yeah, that's a good, that's a good comparison. But it, it's pretty neat. Like. Like, so instead of, like, hunting animals, you're in such the far future that you're, like, hunting, like, techno Robot animals. Dinosaurs. Robot dinosaurs. Robot di- It's cool as fuck. Like, it, it sounds stupid when we're explaining it, but it's pretty the cool. Graphics the thing, are fucking, like... The thing I'm there. interested in, did you see the God of War? The new God of War? Yeah. Dude, so gr- uh, it's not Greek mythology. It is Norse mythology. Fuck yes, dude. I'm all but for he- that. Here's the thing, though, like... So, God of War is probably, and I'm not even understating, my favorite video game IP of all time. Like, I literally, one of the deciding factors in PS4 versus Xbox for me was the idea that I would play a new God of War game on it. So, like, I love that series. I don't know if I'm going to love this new one because... They're changing it up. A lot. It seems to be an RPG. It seems very, well, not even that, but it's like... 
the combat demo that they showed seemed very Dark Soulsy. You know what I mean? Like it was kind of like the fun part about God of War to me was that it was well, kind it was of the a, combos and the, it was insane. The bu- the button smashing, yeah, and the different magics that you can use and the cool like animations with the chains and the I mean the combat was like yeah, like it was like a uh, it was like a fighting it was like one of those fighting games where you do like crazy combos. Right. Like you, and they and even had puzzles. like a combo system where it's like you get like it had a little meter. It's like 85 combo chain. Like right. Well, and, and kind of but it mixed that up with like the action sequences weren't very difficult, but they were like telltale game button mash like epic experiences, you know yeah. what I mean? And like that shit better be there cuz like if it's not I don't think they'll be- yeah, they're smart. I think it'll be a good game. Like, they haven't made a bad game. So, there hasn't been a bad God of War. Like, even God of War Ascension was kind of like, eh. Uh, but even that wasn't bad. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, no, I'm all for it. I like that they're changing it up. To be honest, you know, they're, you know Kratos would have been the easy choice. You know, it would have been easy just to do another fucking God of War same shit. But I like that they're changing it up, despite the fact that they didn't really have to. I mean, he's still Kratos, right? Like, he's no, still... I don't think so. And they changed his name too. I mean, it's, I mean, just, it's a it, completely it's different setting, a... right? But I mean, he still looks the same, kind of. He looks he's like got, an old dude. He's got the same god. Of, he's got the God of War like red stripe thing, but it doesn't look like the same guy. It doesn't sound right. like it's not the same voice actor. I don't think either. I think it's a different character in a different time, right, in a different enough. universe, but same principle. But he's right. like probably the god of war of Norse. Like it's probably the same concept of, of god of war, but instead of Greek mythology, it's Norse Norse mythology. So he's like the god of war wolf guy or some bullshit. I don't know. Right. I don't know. It looked cool. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm certainly gonna fucking play it. That's for sure. Uh, but, Titanfall two. Yep. Uh, looked cool as shit. Uh, yeah. I love Titanfall one. I just didn't I did like- too. There were some things about it I didn't, I didn't like, but uh, that was actually fun fact. The first v- YouTube video I ever made was me filming my girlfriend playing now wife Titanfall for the first time, and she uh, blind threw a uh, grenade and killed somebody in it. I and was very good at Titanfall. I have like some videos of me going bananas on Titanfall. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited for the new one, Titanfall. I'm just curious. Yeah. 102 and 0, 143 and 1. 146 and 0. Oh, here's the here's the motherfucker game. Uh, let's see here. Copy link address. Eh. You know what I wanted I was thinking about doing is um Yeah, I you can think- just watch that muted and see how much of a goddamn god I was at Titanfall. Oh, you got to mute it. I can hear you. No, that's fine. Uh, anyway. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to watch the whole thing. But anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Fuck, I forgot. Yeah, no, I'm glad they're doing a campaign thing, and I'm glad that it's not an exclusive, too. But, yeah, um, that not being an ex- like that really hurt them. That really hurt Titanfall a lot, is the fact that it was on the fucking Xbox shitty one uh, and not on the PS4. Because the Xbox one was just, it still is trash, but it was really trash at the start. They had no fucking games, and it was clearly the loser of the console war, and still is. Um I don't know though. Did you see uh, the announcement for the new one? Like apparently the Xbox Scorpio or whatever. Apparently Xbox is going all like they're they're saying all right, we're not going to be the fucking low res piece of shit again. Yeah, they're going to make people buy a new fucking box though. Yeah, so that's is PlayStation. I, I that shit's stupid as fuck to me. The whole point of consoles is to buy a set piece of hardware that you know is going to be the thing for the next few years. Right. That's been, like, the whole fucking point. Like, they're getting... Like, consoles are, are retarded now. Like, what's the fucking point if it's not going to be the same box for the next few years? And and, it's, and even the game developers say it's retarded. Because they're like, what? Why is... Now we have to develop for two sets of hardware and two sets of features? Like, they have to choose whether to prioritize the new Xbox or uh, the old one. Like, do we design around... Like, do we design our, our visuals around the fact that people... Have the new Xbox or the old one? Like, they have to make compromises and shit. It's stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'll buy one. So, 
like I'm just glad that like I, I the more I think more I um like see like the the way the VR landscape is shaping up too like I think uh PSVR is probably going to be the go-to VR platform for games. You know what I mean? Like I I think that they're like really like committing to it. So like I'm glad that I I guess what I'm saying is I'm glad that I canceled all my fucking pre-orders for uh yeah, I wonder if you're gonna have to get you're gonna have to get the new PS4 for that, right? The Neo um, to be able to do VR. I'm assuming. I, I, I don't know if you have to, but I know that uh, like it's made for it, so it might just be like shitty resolution or something if you don't have it. See, I don't think so. Like actual like good VR takes so much like processing power. Right. Like it, it's like VR is like destroying like good fucking computers. Right. I mean, I'm, I may still buy a Vive, like if as long as, I, but I need to definitely get proven that they're gonna put more content out, like AAA content, before I get one. Because I mean, like you and I kind of disagree. Like I, I'm way more into the VR shit than than you are. Um, yeah, I'm not interested at all. <laughs> which is fine. I mean, that's fine. But I, uh, the Rift too. Did you see the Rift uh, kind of backpedal on all their DRM shit? They were like, well, they got a lot of a lot of heat. Yeah. So I hope it doesn't tank, dude. I hope I. I mean, I want that technology to kind of be around and do other. Cool I, I things. think it will. I think it'll it'll fizzle. Yeah, maybe. But Hol- Hololens is another one that hasn't even come out yet. It was supposed to be like a Windows 10 device, you know. Um, we'll see. But yeah, there's more stuff at E3, dude. What about that uh, Hideo Kojima thing? Oh, this you know, is some weird artsy fucking game. I don't know. You know what Let's I think see. is fucking gay about Hideo Kojima? Like, you'll notice that, like, he's so full of himself that, like, when they came out with that thing, it was like, this is a Hideo Kojima production from Kojima Productions, directed by Hideo Kojima, written by Hideo Kojima and, like, another guy. You know what I mean? Like, starring, well, you know what I mean? Like, is his fucking... Well, people think he's, like, were, the second coming of Christ, so... I mean, I why? Maybe Metal Gear Solid was shit. okay. Like, Metal Gear Solid wasn't, like, the fucking most amazing thing to ever hit gaming. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I don't know why he's got a big circle jerk around him. I think it's just because like Konami fucked him over a little bit, and people were like, "Yeah, now he's Jesus." Right. It's just some skinny little weird Asian dude. Yeah, I mean, obviously those Metal Gear Solid games he made were fucking good. I don't think anybody's denying that, but like, right? Really? But not like the best thing ever to come to games. Yeah. No. I agree. So. Anyway. Um, what else did they have? They had that, uh, that rope, uh, that game where you're like, a like the kid falls off the roof. I forget what you call it. It was like Detroit or something. And you got to like do different story things to like change the outcome a bunch of different times. Uh, never mind. You don't know what I'm talking about. No. They had that. Um, I don't know. They had a couple of things. I thought it was a really good E3 though, especially like from Sony. Yeah. It's going to be hard for them to top the E3 where both the new consoles were coming out. That one was pretty fucking amazing. Uh, That's the best E3 that we've had in a while. Um, I'm trying to look and see. I'm like looking through my Twitter. I think that's about it. Halo Wars 2, eh, I don't really care. Um, Dishonored 2? That was good. You ever played the I first didn't Dishonored? See- I did. I really liked it, but I didn't see. I haven't seen Dishonored 2 yet. Yeah, you get to play as you know the the Emily Caldwell girl that you were like the whole game like revolved around. Right. You get to play as her in the new one. That's which is cool. pretty fucking cool. And she's got some sick abilities, so I like that game a lot. Yeah. Um there's just gonna be some couple of cool things that are coming out. I uh not are in the excited though. for Battlefield One or like not at all? Because I'm like I, I like the concept of it, but I'm just not a big Battlefield guy. Like, I'm way more into, like, Titanfall. I'm, like, into that style of game a lot more. I'll probably play it because it'll have really cool graphics, and I'll play, like, the campaign. But, no, I'm not, like, a huge, crazy uh, Battlefield COD guy. I think Overwatch really is just going to fucking consume my life for the next while. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I Like, yeah, I... No, not really. Uh, a lot of people are, though. I think there's still, I mean, like, I guess there's still a lot of people that are, like, super big, like, Battlefield COD people, which, 
I, I guess I, I don't know. I want to. I want to be like what you really haven't moved on in like ten years. Like, do you think that young people are, or do you think it's like older gamers that are like Battlefield COD people? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, Overwatch has really like changed my tastes in games. Um, I've always been like a big pub stomp kind of guy. Like I've always been like I, I never really gave a fuck about competitive for the longest time. And Overwatch has kind of gotten me into like playing. You mean with... like you mean like noob poner kind of people? Yeah, like... no, I, I was one of those guys that liked to go on Call of Duty and shit on the worst players of all time and go on like <laughs> sixty five kill streaks. That was the shit I. Enjoyed. You don't want to actually have a challenge. You yeah. just want to like wreck. I just want to fuck so up noobs. I, I want to do that maximum too. efficiency. So I've actually been. Uh, have you ever played a Zim Four? Apparently, a Zim Four yes, is. Yes, a... I have one. Do you really? How does yes. it work? Uh, it basically translates your uh, mouse movements into joystick movements. Right, and keyboard, right? Like yeah. so, you can mouse and keyboard it. It's like, not one to one though. Have you used it with a uh, Overwatch yet? Uh yes, I tried it. Uh, it wasn't really that great. Really? But it, it was probably mar- markedly better than a controller. Uh, no, not really. With Overwatch, it was pretty bad. Really? Um, Overwatch is just horrible on consoles. Like I played it for like twenty minutes, and it was just ass on consoles. Yeah. It, it's it's really so like fucking it. slow. It is. That's why I was thinking if I had that and I turned the sensitivity up, I'd be playing it like fucking like. You know, no, it, it doesn't. Sixth gear, and everybody else would be on yeah, like. Yeah, no, it, it doesn't work very well for Overwatch. It really depends on the game. It works really well for COD. Um, it works really well for COD, but for the other stuff I've tried, not so much. Okay. All right. Well, then I won't worry about it then. Yeah. No. Um. But yeah, Overwatch has really changed the way I think. Like, I guess because it's such a fun game to play with other people that it's just easier to get into it competitively. Because for the longest time, I just didn't give a fuck. Like, when I played Titanfall, didn't really care about winning or losing. All I wanted to do is just fuck people up and go for, the, like... I wanted to break my record of the most kills and least deaths. And that's what I just did. Um, with Overwatch, I'm actually, like, trying to win. And, like, caring about getting better. And, like, I'm actually going to play the competitive. Like, with COD, I never fucked around with League Play or any of that bullshit. Because, like, who gives a fuck? But with Overwatch, I'm actually, like, looking at the top players and seeing, like, how my, whatever, for Zarya, for example, like, how much average shielding I'm doing per game compared to them. And I'm watching, like, videos of better people than me and actually trying to get good. So it feels nice. Right. Whereas with COD, it was just like, fuck it. I'm gonna fuck up some people with no thumbs. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Like, I, you know... I, I think I'm just I, I I played it really hard, like when it first came out, and uh, I think I'm just I'm sort of stepping back a little bit, not because I want to really necessarily. It's just because like Legion has kind of sucked me in like that. Like I sort of want to I want to play a lot of Legion beta right now so that I don't waste a lot of time when Legion goes live, which sounds kind of weird, but I think you kind of get what I'm saying. Like I don't want to focus on classes that I'm going to end up not liking. You know what I mean? So I kind of want to dip my fingers in a lot of things when I can skip around and make max level characters and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's blah. all I did when I played is just tried out different class mechanics. Like, I've tried out uh, DK, uh, DK Warrior, and Demon Hunter, and Warlock. Yeah, Warlock I haven't fucked around with yet. And uh, Yeah, Affliction's kind of interesting with that soul effigy talent, how you can multi-dot uh, the same target. I- I heard Infliction's really good. Like I, I have not been a. Dude, traditional, it's, it's like, gonna be it's gonna be insane to see how much damage the top players put out in threes. Uh, <laughs> dude, it, the potential there is nuts. Like the amount of micromanaging you can do uh, with the new Affliction is insane. Yeah, I'm gonna try it out for sure. But uh, yeah, that's been pretty much it. Um, I want to, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, uh, I guess Bernie sort of conceded too, right? Yeah. Like in he's... news this week, he's just like, I guess he's voting for Clinton. Did you see this thing about like, apparently, um, a bunch of years ago that like somebody claimed that like Bill Clinton raped her when he was like running for government and like Hillary tried to silence her 
And it's been like, I guess, an on off again sort of quasi conspiracy, but not really, like for years. And I saw her like tweet about it. Did you hear about this thing? No. Yeah, but when you look at this chick, like I don't I don't see how hang on, let me see. Let me Google Bill Clinton rape. Um Juanita Broderick. Um so like apparently she was like a nurse. But when you like look at her like like she does not look like somebody like like Wait, you- uh we're just uh here, I'll just look, put the name. Just in Google image search that name. But like she like I guess this is gonna sound really weird, but like I think Hillary is like a lot more fuckable than this chick. Like this chick looks like a grandma that would make like fucking peach jam. Is and, this... like, how old are these like how long ago was it though? Um a while ago. Like apparently Like are these current pictures of her or pictures of her when it happened? No, there's some young pictures of her, but apparently she it happened so I guess the allegation came out in ninety nine, but apparently it happened in seventy eight. April yeah, of seventy eight. I'm trying to find a picture of her of what she looks like in nineteen seventy eight. I mean she looks I mean you can kinda of tell. But uh yeah, apparently that was a big conspiracy too. I don't know like what baffles bogs my mind is like we had another thing about Clinton. Like so she couldn't didn't release some emails or something, but she's overwhelmingly gonna win this election. And like she's mired in like so much like crap, dude. Like this whole we'll see. I don't know, man. I I I think just based off what's Trump what Trump's done so far, like he started at the bottom and, and like killed everyone. Like he 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 slayed all the giants. So she has a double digit lead on him though. Like polling. Yeah, well, like, I mean, watch. so did like all the other Republican candidates as well. Mm. I think Trump, I think Trump though, honestly has, I mean, maybe, maybe I'll be proven wrong, but all I, we need I, is a few more terrorist attacks. <laughs> all we that need are, that are fucking bound to happen. Probably. Did you see that kid tried to kill him? Yeah. Why was that not bigger news? Somebody tried uh, to assassinate him. I think that's, if he actually gets elected, that's going to happen like every week. You're going to like turn it on like, you know, like last week tonight with John Oliver is going to be like <laughs> last week tonight on Trump's uh, attempted assassination. Yeah. So. Fucking A, man. I cannot believe that Hillary Clinton might actually be the president. It's fucking so shit. Are you ready for your uh, Reddit roast me? Oh, no. Yeah, sure. <laughs> God damn yeah. it, dude. She's like such a fucking unlikable cunt. Like, honestly. I'm not even a... Like, she might not even be human. She's probably, like, a lizard. True. Jesus Christ. True. We want to... Let's see. What do we got? We want to do our... Uh, oh, we, we have to read, double up we, on the comments this week. So we should we probably read, do it early. What was the last one? 30? 30 was our last one? Uh... No, the last no, one. 31. The last one was 31, but we never got to the comments on the Doug podcast. Right. Let's so just we do... need to go back two weeks. I don't think so, though. Uh, well, let's just go. Well, let's see how we go after. Let's just do last week and then see how we go from there. Because last week was different. Last week was like a unique sort of thing, right? Yeah. Um, I can skim see. the comments for the for 25 minutes ago. in. Dope has said five words, but this whole Minecraft house story is just too damn good. Have never heard this shit before? Yeah, I didn't mind. I actually played uh, a lot of WoW while they talked the whole time. Let's see. Holy shit, if you let that guy, he would talk for hours. And then I said, did you listen to the podcast? He did. And then this guy said, only gold came out of his mouth, so it wasn't no issue. Yeah, I think if he's got more stories, he should be back on. He's got a bunch of them. We didn't even hit on the wow shit, dude. The Swifty wow story. Like I, I've told on the podcast before, but he's got a different perspective on it. Yeah. Because he no, was... He... Yeah, he's got a lot of shit, man. We, dude, we did a lot of fucking crazy shit. Back in the wow, like late Wrath Cat of days. Love this podcast, but this is my least favorite episode. Not too bad, but too much of the same topic. And agreed, this dude just talked over do- Zope and Die back too much. He did do that. He did talk a lot. And he's very uh, firm in his fucking belief system, which is, uh, I don't know, what do you, what do you, whatever you call him. <laughs> this gun control stuff. Uh, let's see. Didn't even mention E3. What kind of podcast is this? Is I do. By the way, Doug sounds like he's talking out of his ass. Um, 
we'll definitely hit it on the next podcast. I actually thought that uh, Snake, when he was like telling his stories, I was like thinking of my head because I'm a very like, I mean, with the whole, I think there were some comments too about all how stupid the talk was about billion, trillion, zillion. That's I get dumb. it. I get it. Right. But uh, that's how my brain I, works. I want to I say that I, I said that shit was dumb like two minutes into the conversation and wanted to change the topic and these motherfuckers would not do it. I'm like, no, we gotta, we gotta talk about that's fine. Listen, how my much brain, money weighs my brain works on, on like when somebody says something, my brain and, uh, instantly goes, I wonder if that's actually true. Like I have a very skeptical mind. So, and I also like numbers and science and things. So that's why I was like, well, you got hmm. it wrong. <laughs> Uh, hey, dude, it's hard to do math. You you can't do math on a fucking calculator. It's hard to do I math can't read like, out loud. on the fucking calculator app on my computer while talking live on a podcast. It's true. Muslims don't fit well in America, Canada, and Europe. Okay? Drinking game. Take a shot every time Dope or Doug says right. Wouldn't make it 10 minutes. I agree. Uh, I do say right a lot. I like that. This spaz kill dude fucking puts right on every comment, too, on every episode now. He just types right. Dedicated. Just like the yo 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 guy. Yep. I fucking love Sword Tour when it came out. Such great times with that game. I had a good time too. I think the thing that I don't like about Sword Tour though, as I was thinking about playing it again today, is I don't like how stiff the character movement is. You know what I mean? Like, characters don't like so if you're a like, you know it's not I mean? that the actual characters are stiff, it's just the animations are stiff. Like you have full freedom in yeah. that game, but it's just the the animations are very robotic. Yeah, but right. <laughs> but I mean, wh- what what does it mean that like the character is not stiff? But the, I mean, the character is the animations. It's not stiff like Crowfall is right now, where you're actually locked in. It just looks like it is. Wait, you can't like strafe and turn your camera in Crowfall and like move fluidly. Uh, when you attack in Crowfall, it's like are you familiar with? I mean, you know about Black Desert and Terra, right? Those games have animation locks. Like when you when you do an attack, it locks you in like this forward step. Like you can't just jump around. Like you know how in WoW as like a hunter, you can just keep jumping and shooting and jumping and shooting and do whatever the fuck you want to in terms of movement. Yeah. Like in Black Desert, you can't do that, right? Because it, uh, it, it it locks you in animations. They're quick, but it locks you in animations. Yeah. Soul Tour but... has complete freedom, just like WoW, but the animations aren't as good. WoW's animations are very good. Even the older ones are very. So good. I guess I guess my I guess my my stance is I don't care about that like animation locking. I what I'm referring to is like when you if you just run in a straight line, your character looks like he has a fucking stick up his ass. That's that's exactly what I was talking about. It's not yeah. it's not it's not that the game isn't fluid. It's that the animations aren't as good. Right, and it, so it looks shitty though. Like when it you looks sh- shitty, but it's just, it just that's what it is. It just looks shitty. It's not that it's actually stiffer. It just looks like it is. Right, but that's a big deal for me. Like that's why I, I mean, I, I, it, it looks, it makes the game feel cheap to me, and it isn't, but it, it makes it feel that way. So I hope that one day they fix that so that my dude actually looks like he's not a fucking robot, because there are robots in the game. But uh, anyway, can we have less politics in episode next episode? It's nice to have. Some for us not living in the USA, but I feel half, half an episode is tad too much. Love the first Doug story. We we can't have less politics when the fucking European uh, exit bullshit is the political story, though. Because that has, like... Well, the whole point of the podcast is to do whatever the fuck we want to, so you're not going to like yeah. every episode. Yeah. We could talk more about dicks and jerking off. That yeah, was a monumental exit. We've though. had a jerking off podcast. We need more about that. We need more yeah, jerk off. I'm glad stories. we uh, cur- curtailed that a bit. You don't. You don't. You don't, you don't like jerking off. Oh, I do. I just don't want to talk about it for like three fucking hours, like we did in the past. Every every week. <laughs> yeah. It, Fair it enough. Got a little ridiculous. Uh, lol, dope. Still doing math. Blah blah blah. Okay, got it. Dope was salty this episode. I don't think so. I just didn't. Uh, what I don't like, or what I don't, I don't do well with, are people that I feel like are so stuck in their own like, uh, what's that word when you like preach things? Uh, fuck, I'm trying to think of it. You know what I mean? I'm talking about when you um, there's a word for preaching, but when they like when you're so stuck in your fucking mindset and your beliefs that you can't even really have a conversation without the whole time trying to sell somebody else why they're wrong and you're right and preach your shit. Pontificate. 
that's what he did. And then so like I don't I don't like I don't really like talk like a lot with Doug. I was just like yeah whatever because I I knew that like having the debate wasn't really gonna he should just he should just tell his what he what he thought because there really wasn't gonna be a lot of discussion. Uh, Yo Zyback, according to Dante's Twitter, he has a job now. You guys should invite him back. This time it should go better because dopamine will be there to tell him when he's an idiot if he says anything dumb about calories. <laughs> uh, that's good. I hope he does well. And I, I want to have him on again when, uh, I don't know, if things are going good and he's got some shit to talk about and it's not negative. Have you talked to him at all? No. I haven't talked wow. to him since the last time we did so a podcast. So he, he could fucking hate you for like... No, actually I did talk to him. I don't know. He didn't seem to take it too hard. I was just like, I don't know, man. I'm going to wait for you. I basically just said, like, the podcast have been pretty negative and it's not, like, completely your fault because I realize you're in a shitty situation, but I think we should hold off for now. And that's well, why I, I don't know. He didn't seem you, that upset. You, you basically ghosted him. Like, so you were going to do a podcast well, yeah, dude, with him and you're it, like... Dude, it was getting ridiculous. Like, and you're like, I'm just not going to tell him that we're having it and we're still on it, like... Well, no, like, I told him that... I told him that we that we should take a break from the podcast, but I didn't tell him that I had replaced him because I, I didn't realize that I that you were down to do it either. So I, right. I really didn't know. But you realize that that analogy happens in like dating. <laughs> that should be like that was like my dating life for like years. Was that I'd be like, yeah, it's just yeah, I don't, I don't I, I didn't, I'm not telling you that there's already somebody else, but we're just just not not do this anymore for a while. I'll call you. Kind of deal. That happens uh, all the time. That's easier, by the way. If you're trying to get out of a relationship, just get another one, and <laughs> that'll help you get out of the last one. <laughs> just make make Good a smooth advice. just make a smooth transition. Yeah, it helps. Um, that was a joke, by the way. Anyway, is, go on. This is good advice. Love Douglas. Always a great dude. Douglas is cool until he said sheeple. Douglas, I go. I got Obama started in politics. Douglas, I got Drake started in music. Douglas, I got LeBron started in basketball. Douglas, I got Brady started in football. Well, uh, yeah, well, I mean, he did legitimately get, you know, a lot of these guys that were tiny, like, kind of went through the Dora McTire system at one point. But, no, he definitely wasn't responsible for the success of all of these fucking people. That's for sure. Like, they probably would have been, like, he was a part of it, but he wasn't the reason for it. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite moment in any video game that you've played? And you're also your favorite video game character. Uh, so this isn't my favorite. Well, obviously my favorite moment was the Swifty Band thing because of how fucking insane that was. But dude, I, I actually just recently had a fucking awesome moment in, in video games. Uh, so there's a, there's a YouTuber, um, a WoW YouTuber, uh, named Tosan Tribe, who, uh, is very good at WoW, like, multi-rank one hunter whatever he's a youtuber and streamer and uh i faced him in overwatch and i was in rare zyback form like it's like so when people recognize you it's it's almost kind of annoying because most of the times when people recognize you in game you have like your average whatever game like you don't do that you don't do bad but you don't do like like the typical youtube performance holy shit dude i gave them the biggest black zarya cock of all time yeah, dude, it went per- like it's gonna be a YouTube video. Like, and I'm not trying to like BM him by saying like, look at me shit on him in his squad, but dude, it was unreal. Like, you know how Overwatch will tell you when you beat your career best, like for damage done or whatever. Yeah, like, I've got like 20, I've got like probably like 25, 30 hours on Zarya, and I got career best damage against him and his his team. And dude, everything just went splendidly, and it just felt good because it's like, yes, that's right. Uh, it just feels good, like when people recognize you and you actually show up and play. And well, how do you like, know he recognized you? Did he? Because I went back and watched his stream. Oh. And and, and they what, left the lobby. It's it pretty. It's pretty good. What did he? Uh, what did he say? Was he uh, just? Like, he didn't say much. Like they weren't like super vocal, but like after the game, they're like, "Let's get a new lobby." <laughs> nice. <laughs> I I don't think I've I don't think I've encountered. No, I haven't encountered anybody in Overwatch that like that I recognize. But I, then again, I don't know a lot of like, um, you know, I don't know a lot of like the fucking streamer people anyway. So I may have played them. I just don't know. 
I play with uh, there's one guy. I don't know how big he is. I don't think he's big at all. Like Excaliburs or something. Is like my buddy's streamer friend, and I play on his stream. Excaliburs, maybe. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that dude's huge. Is he really? Yeah, dude. Maybe, I think it might be the same is guy. It this fucking guy. Hang on. This is one of the. Yeah, dude, he's a fucking huge. He's like one of the OG gaming YouTubers. He's good as fuck, as well. Uh. uh... Xcal? Does he go by Xcal? I'm trying to think. Maybe it is this kid. Like if I hear his voice, it is. No, it is him. Yeah, I play with him all the time. That's funny that that dude, he's, he's that really big. fucking good. That's I funny. His that... YouTube channel was bigger than that, but dude, he's a fucking beast. Yeah, uh, so I think he's he got goes a... to another YouTube channel now or something. Yeah. Anyway, that, so I guess I, I, but I play with him and um, his buddy um, Spence. I'm sure he's. Good at Overwatch, I would assume, considering he's good at. Yeah, games. you know who's really good at Overwatch is um, Automatic Jack, who's uh, that like he's like in the priest community and WoW. I don't think he's like a big YouTuber, but he's a pretty big like uh, WoW person. Anyway, all right, moving on. Uh, Zyback, come back to Sword Tour. Just try it as a casual. It has amazing PvP. Uh, oh yeah, uh, so so just to put things into perspective with that Zarya game I had, I'm, I'm looking at the YouTube thumbnail I made. Four gold medals. 42 kills, 21 objective kills, 3 minutes objective time, and 17,000 damage. So you shit on him. Yeah, it was pretty fucking glorious. Cool. Uh, let's see. Well, Zyback, you did call someone dying at a Trump rally. You might still be right, but did you hear about the British guy that attempted to assassinate him? Also, what's the longest podcast you guys think you'll ever do? I don't think we're going to break four hours. No. That's no, unless, unless there's like, unless we have like, you know, I, I could see it happening on accident. Like, if we have like a really good guest and things are just going like crazy, I th may, have we? Maybe we have broken it already. Uh, like three and a half, I think, was like the longest yeah. one. That's just too fucking long. Yeah. Anyway, the longer, the better for me. Since I'm a video editor, I just put your shit on while I'm rendering at work. All yeah. right, that's, that's the goal. That's 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 but what it's I want also, people to do. It also <laughs> like throws a big wrench in the fucking weekend. So it's not too bad, but. Actually, I don't know if I'll be able to do next weekend, honestly. It's 4th of July. That's my favorite holiday, by the way. I don't know if you have a favorite holiday, but 4th of July. Why? Because you get to eat food and be a fat ass? Fat ass? A fat ass. ass. A fat ass. A fat ass. A fat ass. A fat ass. Well, yeah. It's just, it's, the food is excellent, and there's not... Like, it's not too, like, overbearing in terms of, like, family bullshit either. It's not like Christmas where you've got to do this whole, like, marathon of shit. It's just like you show up, you eat, you chill out, and that's it. You uh, Thanksgiving, it's are you a turkey uh, person or a ham person? I'm both. Okay. I am get both and put lots of gravy on both. With Your fucking potatoes. family doesn't do the fucking turduncan, do they? Because that's fucking stupid. What is that? The turduncan, <laughs> turdun. I don't even know how to say it right. Turduncan. Well, Hang just on. explain it. Turduck. I don't Tur give a fuck about the the, the phonetics. No, no, you don't. You've never heard of this. No, first? just explain what it is. I don't give. I don't give a fuck about the pronunciation. <laughs> it's a turducken. It's a fucking turkey stuffed with a duck stuffed with a chicken. That shit sounds good as fuck. You've never, you've never seen that. It's nope. fucking. It's fucking weird as shit. Yeah, it's turkey stuffed with a duck stuffed with a chicken. Anyway, uh, it was fucking gay. I'm only one hour in. Already my favorite podcast. I fucking love Doug's stories. Please have him on again. Yeah, see, this, that last podcast was kind of, uh, what's the word, where you divide people? Uh, polarizing? Just yeah, because some... the, the people that, like, the nostalgia people that have been around a while and were there for that kind of stuff, like the SWOTOR stuff and the uh, Cataclysm stuff, really probably like that throwback. But the new people, maybe not yeah, so Yeah, I enjoyed the story. Like I said, I, I, I messaged you after the show, and I was like, I wonder how people are going to like that. Cause, yeah, I mean, like, like, it's either people's least favorite or, like, most favorite at this point, it seems like. Yeah. Um, let's see. I started watching Zyback myself because I love playing Feral, and he was such a god, and I suck dicks more than Mia Rose. Okay. There were days... Uh, okay, anyway. Considering... Our, I'm triggered. I bought Overwatch expecting two hours of Overwatch banner. Fucking unsubbed and resubbed faggot. Don't get me started on Dopa. I was ready for him to show us his final form of autism. And what do we get? Actual conversation, political discussion. The fuck is that? I came here for the Down syndrome. I'm heated like a hot pocket. Beer it back. I'm going to make a hot pocket. Still mad, though. 
on a serious note, Doug sounds like a really cool guy. I would let him bang me if I was a hot 21, 23 year old female. <laughs> okay. Uh, great podcast. Went off the rails a bit when you got dope talking about stacks of cash. <laughs> yeah. Dope felt like he was talking to children about politics. Here's the thing. I didn't, I didn't feel like children. I just like, I think it's a skill. Like, I don't think it's a skill that a lot of people have, but I think like after being like in the military and after being like in my position, like when you have a discussion with somebody about something that you don't agree with them on or you, you're not seeing like eye to eye, you have to do it in sales a lot too, right? Is like the, the key is just to add, like not even really talk about what you think and just ask questions to make people like actually flush out their own arguments. And nine times out of ten, people are going to at least – if people are really off base and saying just dumb shit, nine times out of ten, they're going to realize it if you ask them enough questions. I just don't like having discussions where people just like basically just fucking like ejaculate their stupid idea that they hundred percent agree. I think is well. The correct. thing is, is that all of the stuff we were talking about, or most of it, if I'm recalling correctly, is not really something you can have a discussion about. You kind of just think this way, or you don't like the P. Especially when it comes to being pro gun, like the whole argument for pro gun, you you just can't you can't really debate out of it. It's you know, people don't. Well, want did you them. see? I, I kind of. Well, it's right? just that people like the people that want them want them because you know fear of government tyranny, and it's just like. Well, did you see the? Uh, did you see the Supreme Court deciding by not deciding on the New York and Connecticut um, like local gun laws that they challenged for like the Second Amendment? Did you see all that shit that happened? No. So. Let's see. Uh, New York, Connecticut, Connecticut. Yeah. Gun law, Supreme Court. That's enough Googling. Supreme Court turns away challenge to Connecticut ban on semi automatic weapons. So basically, like, I'll just read this. Supreme Court refused on Monday to hear a Second Amendment or a challenge to a Connecticut law banning many semi automatic rifles. The law enacted in 2013 in the wake of mass shooting at Sandy Hook made it a crime to sell or possess the firearms, which critics call assault weapons. The decision to not hear the case not long after the mass shooting in Orlando does not set a Supreme Court precedent, but is part of a trend in which the justices have at least given tacit approval to broad gun control laws in states and localities that choose to enact them. So basically, they did this ban that a lot of people talk about, right? And the se- the Second Amendment you know, purporters or whatever came and said, that's not constitutional because I have a right to bear arms. And the Supreme Court said, whatever Connecticut tells you is what it's going to be because we're going to leave that to the states. Because the Supreme Court isn't hearing a lot of shit right now because the fucking, you know, Scalia died, right? And they got like a vacancy and like there's a lot of like shit going on. So they're not like hearing a lot of things. But here's the thing I have. Like, here's the, the question that I wonder about. So... This Brexit thing happened, right? And you have Trump, who's a real big fan of giving all the power to the states, right? Here's why I think giving a lot of power to the states is a bad idea. Because if you give, let's say you give like complete power to all the states, right? Like states can pretty much do whatever the fuck they want as long as it's not gross, like federal, like shit. Then you're going to get like, you're going to have states that like basically form clicks right like people are going to move out of areas and move into areas and blah 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 already have you heard of the texit thing no but I, as soon as you said like states doing that texas is obviously the fucking the one right to so do it. already there's a texit hashtag where there's this party in texas that wants to secede right yeah that whole secede shit is pretty dumb but i do think texas is pretty gangster for a lot of stuff they do but yeah no, right the, the whole they follow their own fucking stupid. drum of course but I, I just think that the more you give, like, states should be given a lot of, like, leeway, right? Well, the, but, the reason Trump is pro-state, like, the reason why it seems like he is, is because that's the fucking get-out-of-jail-free card. Of course it is. What do you think about this, Trump? Leave it up to the states. Because it's just like, that's like Republicans whatever. love it. Republicans love it, and he doesn't have to make a decision. He, yeah, he doesn't have to, you know, polarize anybody. Right, exactly. Yeah, it's the I just perfect think that's answer why, for, like, damn near everything. Right, I just think that that's... Like and and a lot of like the right wing like gun advocate 
GOP leaning people are all for like states' rights, right? Like I think that I think we just have to run, run, like. Well, even Gary line. Johnson is state. Yeah, state he is. Rights. I don't agree with everything when Gary Johnson has to say. I do think the state should have power. I just think we have to be careful because we don't want to like. You don't want like. Texas to try to secede, right? And then you're going to have fucking California that's probably going to do their own thing at some point in time. And then you'll have like... Well, obviously, there needs to be limits, the, but... There'll be like the gun states, and then there'll be like the states where like all the black people hang out, and then like the Hispanic people and the white people, and then like... You know what I mean? It'll just not I, be... I don't think it'll get to that point, but... But, uh, yeah. I'm telling you right now that like... <laughs> there are some states that would like eject like all of the minorities if they fucking could do so or you know or make it really uh not friendly i don't know dude anyway uh i just hope that i think that texas seceding thing is stupid as fuck i, yeah, hope I don't they know try. why they're so hellbent on that shit i hope they try it i hope they do it's not gonna go well i know that's why i just want to see it <laughs> they try it i have to say as a christian i feel quite misrepresented we don't mind gay people. We just don't think the idea of homosexuality is the way to go. I did quite a few puzzles as a kid, so I think this makes sense. All right. Puzzles? People can do <laughs> puzzles. I don't know what puzzles have to do with it. People can do whatever they want. Just don't force us to marry you in our churches. People can be just very judgmental these days, and that goes both ways. And then I said, I, I don't think a Christian church, to my knowledge, has ever been forced to marry a gay couple. Like, nor would I personally support making them do so. And he said, that's what they're doing in Denmark. I don't think you can argue anything about other fucking countries. Because, I mean, if you're gay in the fucking Middle East, they'll just kill you. So, like, yeah, I think we have to talk. Fucking roof. Yeah, I don't think we have to talk about, like, other countries. But do you think, you think that a Christian church would ever be made to marry gay people in these states? I don't think so. No, the, the, the whole thing, that's separation of church and state. That's, like, the whole fucking point. Right. But yeah, they're gonna be able to get married through the the government. Like they're gonna be able to fucking sign the papers and shit. But in terms of like the ceremony, no, I don't think they're gonna force churches to do that. Nor should they. No, right? like, no, they shouldn't. Right. Exactly. Um, you're speaking a lot about America and foreign politics and war, but you're leaving out the fact that America started their own war, and that war is just a way to make money for the U.S. E.g. 9/11. Yep. Uh, uh, I don't Mar- think anybody disagrees with that. Marsh, Arabs, arming and funding Al Qaeda and ISIS. Mm. Yeah, we like doing that. That's for sure. Nine mm, eleven, though, I'm not gonna think. I mean, is he talking about going in after nine eleven, or is he talking about nine eleven? Because if he's a nine eleven conspiracist, that's fucking stupid. We didn't do nine eleven. Like, you don't believe that, do you? Uh. Oh God. There's some things that um, are shady, but. I don't. I don't think it was completely a giant government conspiracy thing, but. But you don't completely think that it wasn't. Yeah. No. I. I. Yeah. I'm still pretty up in the air on it, dude. There's some shit. Like, there's some talks from. Um, there's a really good one. Uh, from engineers and architects that are like looking at this shit, going like, "It's kind of fucking sketchy." Um, so I'm not as knowledgeable on it because I'm not a fucking engineer and architect, but. Hearing the people that actually design these buildings and know how these buildings work talk about some of this bullshit is a little bit alarming. Uh, and I don't know. Hearing the professionals talk about it and be like, look, this whole like Tower 7 thing is fucking retarded. Like, two planes hit two buildings and three buildings fell? Like, okay. Um, and then and then you need to look at what happened after 9 Like, I think if 9-11 happened in the age of smartphones and like snapchat and shit i just think things would be a little different okay that's all okay and you gotta look at what happened after 9-11 too like the patriot act and all that shit it's a little i don't know it's a little sketchy and you can't say it's never happened before like the gulf of tonkin like fake never fucking happened and that's why we got into vietnam fucking fake okay all right all right well what's your opinion on that i I don't have one. Exactly. I don't have one. Last week I was high on weed listening. This week I'm tripping on acid. Weed is the gateway drug confirmed. All right. Douglas may be related to Jesse Ventura. Gloria Victus is a guy a game you guys should check out. I did look at Gloria Victus, actually. Captain or Captain. Um, it looks good, but 
It's a Steam like early access thing. Uh, looks kind of. It looked like I would be playing fucking uh, Monty Python and the Quest for the Holy Grail. Hello, the welcome MMO, back to another. Honestly, like it didn't. There's nothing about it that I saw that I was like, I need to play this game. Like it, it just looked pretty generic. Did you uh, have you seen actually the uh, Forsaken Legends? Is that back? No. It's pretty cool. Like, look it up. Forsaken Legends. It's like a. It's not cartoony, but it's not realistic. It's like in the middle. But it's it. What's cool about it is three dudes are making it. Like literally three dudes. Uh, see, that kind of that already turns me off. Yeah, but I mean, Crowfall is a small team too. But yeah, anyway, but it's listen. a small team of like fifty people. Yeah, but just just check this out. So, but just hear me. I mean, I, I don't think this is going to be the next big thing by any means. But just if you look at it, what's cool about it is, um, so the world is procedural, first of all, but it's endlessly procedural. So like like um, Minecraft. what's that? No, what's that game that got delayed and the guy got death threats? Hello games. Oh, uh, the one where you like go from planet to planet. Space. Uh, yeah. Oh, what the fuck, fuck is that? that goddamn? God damn it! Oh. This is so obvious. It's so obvious what the name is, and I can't think of it. Uh, I see the little logo too. You know what I'm talking about, though. Everybody know knows what talking we're talking about. about. I'm just fucking. Uh, yeah, it's gonna podcaster. flop. It's gonna suck Pop. dick. Hang on, let me just Google Hello Games. Hello Games. How do I know the publisher, but I don't know the fucking game? No Man's Sky. That's yeah. Um. So like that, but so you could if you run north, for example, you'll never run out of like landmass. Yeah. Minecraft like, is like that as well. The game will keep generating. Like dungeons, and but it also do dungeons. Like it'll put dungeons in there. It'll put like raid bosses in there. Like it'll put a lot of shit in there. Everybody's on like the same server. It's all like destructible, persistent shit. You can build bases. You can. It's got procedural loot. I mean, it's pretty cool, dude. Like I, uh, I hope they pull it off. Like I probably won't give them any money because I don't have a lot of faith that they'll pull it off. But like, <laughs> it's a game that like I'll watch like the YouTube updates for on a fairly consistent basis and if it starts to turn like it might be an interesting game i may give them like the 20 dollars to play yeah see crowfall is doing a lot of what they're doing but i think they're doing it in a way more realistic approach to where they're doing procedural generated stuff but the players are creating the content so they're not having to do the hard work of creating meaningful procedurally generated pve content because that's just i never just gonna fucking happen. i just think that it's i find it crazy that they think they're going to release this year like when I ever, whenever I see a video of that game, I'm like, oh, I don't know, man. Oh, this what, Crowfall? Yeah. Uh, there's a good chance they won't. But, so, um, I mean, I we mean, they said months, December 2016. So, like, I don't know. Uh, the other thing too is that lead designer guy creeps me the fuck out. Which like one? not not J Todd the Coleman, fat, the fat guy with the crazy little goatee yeah, thing. The Thomas Blair guy. Is that is that it? I'm yeah, Thomas Blair images it doesn't creep me out but i I don't know how you get the creepy part oh yeah that guy that's definitely the guy i don't know his goatee's weird like he just he just looks like a fucking cartoon character he just creeps me out yeah Uh, i like a lot of the game design decisions they've made so far like i think they've got a pretty good team i'm I'm pretty confident um yeah it'll be they're doing a 12 hour live stream on monday like they're gonna drop a whole bunch of bombs so Oh, really? uh, they might hit the December release date because the thing about Crowfall is like it's not that ambitious if you really think about it. Like, no, they have a lot. They have a lot of stuff to do with the classes wow. still, like the promotion stuff and the crafting. But like, really, it's just like a giant sandbox. So like, it's not like they need to create PVE content or all this other shit. I want you to know that I just Google image searched Thomas Blair Crowfall. First row, all Crowfall dudes. Second row, all Crowfall dudes. Third one, fourth one. The fifth row is this fucking dopey kid on <laughs> YouTube channel. Who's that hottie? <laughs> this picture right Dude, there. Look at that high resolution image. Wow. Damn, that was probably a while ago. It was a little, what still are pretty, all these caves? Still pretty chubby. Oh, that's the Kickstarter backer oh. thing. Yeah. I wonder how long ago that was. Dude, I, I was still pretty fat in that picture. You can yeah. see I've got the, the the fat neck still a little bit. Anyway. Yeah, I don't know, dude. I, I They did their animation update, Crowfall did, and I was like, 
the confessor one. Yeah, yeah, they're doing lots of tweaks like that that are making the yeah. game a lot better. And another thing they did was they've they've really improved on their server like latency stuff. Uh, but they still need to do a lot of like passes. Well, I've I've given them a hundred dollars, so I'm damn sure gonna give that game a fucking a full shake. I promise you. All right, let's see. Uh, I think not everyone here in Saudi Arabia are willing to kill gays, but there's some will who do it. Will will do it. Yeah, that's yeah, the thing. It's a spectrum. It's yeah, like not all fucking Muslims are fu- are, are terrorists. They're gonna blow up, you know, football stadiums, but. Some of them will you know be the like, other thing oh, too, I understand why that guy blew up that stadium. You know, the other thing, too, is um, have you seen, like, since the vote on this Brexit thing, that there's been, like, a drastic uptick in, like, I don't want to say racist, but, like, nationalist, like, get out of our fucking country, like, attitude of, of like, the Britons? Yeah, well, that's that's the, the reason. That's, that's what's going to happen they... in America, dude. If we elect Trump, that's going to be our yeah. fucking future. Yeah. You're gonna you're gonna have like shops to be like get out you're Muslim I'm not fucking serving you and then it's gonna go and Trump's gonna be like I don't think it'll like, be so much that is it just they like see the thing is is that no one has a problem with the Americanized Muslims like and that and that's part of the problem that like people don't understand is like you mean ones that don't wear ninja suits yeah basically so like everybody everybody thinks that like the Muslims coming over from Syria are the same fucking have the same mindset as your Muslim buddy that works in IT with you? No. No. It's not even close. It's it's a completely different fucking world over there. So I, I don't think in terms of the United States it's going to be that big of a deal. I've never but seen one though. I've never seen like a... You've seen them all the time, but they're not... They're not... They're Americanized. They're just like me and you, but mm, they come No, from... I've never seen like... Because I've seen real... I've seen some shit, dude. <laughs> like when I lived in Bahrain, like... And Bahrain is not like a war torn. Bahrain is like it's an island off the coast of Saudi Arabia. So like when the Saudis are done like playing religious and they want to go fuck prostitutes and do drugs, they go over the bridge to Sa- to Bahrain for the weekend and they party and then they go back. So Bahrain's not that bad, but like I saw some dudes over there that like they would walk. This dude walk up to me. I was walking in. Um, it was a restaurant actually, and they had all you can eat like steak and all, things for like six bucks. <laughs> it was actually really good. But uh, this dude walked up to me and he fucking spoke Durka to my face, and like he knew that like I didn't speak fucking Durka, right? But he was like looking at me with this crazy fucking look in his eye, and he was like fucking blah 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 blah, blah. and I'm like, dude, I don't even, I don't know what you're saying, like white guy, English guy. And he was like, give me this crazy fucking, you know, like they would do that shit. Like, and he spoke English because everybody in Bahrain speaks English for the most part. So like, I knew he could understand me, but he was just being a dick for no reason. Dude, I've seen that. I saw a guy. What the fuck does that have to do with Muslims in the United States? I'm telling you, like the, the, like over there, like people were fucking cra- Like you knew though, like you could look at people that would like. I don't know. They just had like a different yeah, way. As, you, about as I can say, I as don't I, find as I that said, in the it's States, a completely though. different. It's a completely yeah. different thing over but, there. But what I'm saying is, is that the people that you're talking about that come over here, right? Like I have never seen one of those people. Maybe I have, but I just haven't. Like I've never yeah, because, seen a Muslim dude. I'm like yeah, that guy the is whole probably a murderer. War torn area of the Middle East hasn't been as like hot as it is now. Like, if the U.S. just opened up their borders like fucking Germany did, then uh, it'd probably be a different story. Um, and uh, also, we have, God bless, the Atlantic Ocean right. helping us out. Right. So, um, and the Pacific. Two I guess depending on which way you go. I, Atlantic would be the way you go, right? I mean, right, but I'm just saying, like, there's two of them. And we have Mexico. Yeah, well, no Canada. fucking shit. There's also an Indian Ocean too, but it's not really relevant to this conversation. <laughs> yeah, but it also doesn't border the fucking continental United States. Like, Whatever. Right. They wouldn't be yeah. going to the Pacific Ocean anyway. Whatever. They could. That, this is dumb. <laughs> Everything you said was fucking retarded. Dude, uh, let's let's best, chalk that up to the part, autism. The best part of this show is when I say something that's obviously not <laughs> just retarded. No, no, no that, that's and then the you thing. just go, you just no, no, get no, no, so no, no, triggered. You say you something that it. is stupid, and then you try to. It's like it's like when you're when somebody is when you're like the guy that says something oh, stupid. Whatever and, you say, and rather right than now admit you said something stupid, you're like, I'm just trolling. 
No, it, that's not like no, 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 no. You you can't get no, out of that. Like what you said is like the Pacific Ocean is fucking irrelevant. And like it's you, not, you like though. to say you like to it's say fucking... that you you said that on purpose just to fuck with me. No, you just I said do. that because it was dumb as fuck. And now you're like, oh, we're fucking right. with them. And the reason that it was dumb was to fuck with you because you no. get triggered when you hear dumb. No, things. it's not. Yes, you do. You're triggered right now. Like I'm I'm enjoying this I'm so much. I'm triggered by the fact that you <laughs> like to use that as like a, a thing. You're like, so any, triggered. Any, anytime you say something that's just completely I have dumb the biggest or a joke that's face. unfunny. No, you'll say a joke that's unfunny, <laughs> and I won't react to it, and you'll be like, oh, I got him. I'm so triggered. Listen to you. You're so mad. I'm not, I'm not mad. mad. I'm, I'm, just, not... I'm just defending myself. I have zero myself. investment in, into what I said. I do that to my fucking wife all the time, too, and it, it brings me so much joy in my life that she gets so mad over the little shit. And just, I, just, I just say words, and she gets angry. Like, what I told you is like, you're like 52 weeks. I'm like, that's almost a year. And you just get so triggered. It's so good. No, no, you said that. But you're not doing it on purpose. You're, you're, <laughs> yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. Because you'll, you'll make a joke that you you're think right. is funny, and I'll have no reaction to it. And I because won't ever and I won't ever say anything. And you'll because be like, you don't get it. You don't know it's a joke. No, because it's, it's not that I don't get it. It's just because a lot of them aren't funny. <laughs> This whole conversation is really fun to me. <laughs> You're just getting more yeah, agitated. I'm not mad. I'm just saying that what it is. <laughs> I got anyway, it. Anyway, let's move on. Pacific Ocean. I did see a guy, though, one time in Bahrain. Uh, he was walking on the pier, and they have their, um, I think you call it a top. It's the white, like, sheet that they wear. Like, not the fucking headpiece, but the actual, like, like sheet. Like, white ghost sheet. The guy hiked that thing up, squatted down on the ground, took a big shit on Designated. the ground. On the ground and took his hand. This is why you don't and shake wiped hands his own it, ass. Yeah. And wiped his ass with his hand over there. And flinged it. Like he fucking flung it and then just kept walking. Like he didn't wipe his hand on his white fucking thing, but he Yeah. Like you will walk in a store over there and get like almost knocked out from like the body odor smell. It's really bad. Uh, all right, let's let's keep going. Yo yo yo, Joel Osteen is a millionaire. Got it. I remember watching streams that that Moldavian dude was on, and he's fucking insane. Get him on, whatever it takes. Yeah, I want to get him on. Uh, I'm circling about this idea that the U.S. debt is complete bullshit, and they are just creating more money and noting it as debt. That way, they avoid devaluing the dollar while making more money. What? Okay, I don't really know what to say to that. <laughs> Doug is great. Maldavin was pretty good until that guy turned into Alex Jones. I don't know who that is. Oh, you don't know who Alex Jones is? He's like Alex the Jones. conspiracy guy that's like really ridiculous. That's probably why I don't know. Yeah, I, no, he, I, he's, he's pretty things. entertaining, but uh, you definitely don't. Think some moon landing is fake too? I don't know. Um, <laughs> probably. Probably. I'm disappointed. Well, like his, whole, his whole thing is like, like, yeah, his whole thing is just fucking ridiculous. Because it's like, he has a, a vested interest in, like, making everything a fucking conspiracy because it's his entire empire. Like, he's got, he's done very well for himself just by being a conspiracy guy. So, yeah, no, he's, yeah. he's, he's too fucking off the rails See, for me. See, I don't think that things don't happen that aren't illegal and would never be known to the public. Like, I don't think that that, I'm not so naive to think that that doesn't happen, but... I also don't think that a lot of, like, these people that have zero faith, like, they always think, like, Big Brother, fucking this and that. I think those people are also ridiculous. Like, the argument, like, there's this whole argument about, like, them redacting the fucking transcript that the guy from uh, Orlando, like, he basically, the like, the groups and the people that he pledged allegiance to on the 911 calls, they, like, redacted those at, at the start. And, Ob- and Obama, the administration's reasoning was they don't want to, like, basically say the names of these people and organizations to basically do their work for them, to promote, like, their fucking shit or whatever. And, like, the the critics of that are like, how dare you not recognize the true threat and, you know, you're disrespecting the families and we're too scared to call it radical Islam. Like, that whole argument is just fucking dumb to me. Like... Anyway, like that kind of shit is like yeah, you know, actually <laughs> It is kind of funny though. They they dude, he will not like they will not say anything as like radical Islam. Like they are so like the media in general is so afraid to say it. Media is not. I mean that oh 
Obama just chooses not to use that term. Like he actually, did you see the speech yeah, where he's he talked about? Yeah, because he's walking on fucking eggs. No, did like, you? I, see I, I can assure you, fucking Trump would have said it. Of course he would. But did you see the speech where Obama responded to Trump's criticism of him for not using the term? It no. was like a, a twenty-five minute. Uh, Holy fuck, dude! What? You can't. He can't fucking do it a little quicker than that. No, no, it was a whole speech about like, about like it was a. It wasn't just about Trump. Trump was like the last like four minutes of it. But it was about like that, about using those terms and about like kind of where we're at on our war on terror and some of the things we've done and blah, blah, blah. It's actually a really good uh, – You got see. a summary? What uh, was the general uh, – Obama, Trump. No, 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 I mean like you, you, you said – I'm assuming you listened to it, right? I did. What was the, what was the general thing he was saying? Here. Like why, why, why is he not using that term? Because, because he doesn't want to – and again, I, I listened to it once, so I may get the I, – I linked it, so link it so people can okay. listen to it uh, themselves. Yeah, I, I will. But uh, it's basically like he doesn't um, – he doesn't want ISIS – like the whole idea behind ISIS and those radical groups is they want to be able to speak for the world's population of Muslims, right? Like they want to basically group hug – all the Muslims of the world into their cause and grow yeah. and make themselves seem a lot bigger than they, they are. They want it to be a Muslim v everyone else. Thing. Correct. So That's they can they justify want. all their jihad and all their other fucking crazy shit, right? Yep. Like he doesn't want to do that. So like the terms that he uses and when he tries not to like when he redacts like this other kind of shit, he's he's very careful about the terminology he uses. But in the fucking speech he says you know, what would using the term radical Islam actually do? Like, would it kill more terrorists? Would it, you know, he has a lot of really good no, points. So That's why I urge people to listen thing, to it. My thing is that I, I just find it frustrating that people won't call it what it is. Like, that's what it is, though. It is radical Islam. Right. And I, I just find it frustrating from just a principle standpoint that, and this goes with anything, like anything in life. Like, when people want to beat around the bush and not, like, let's say, like, some guy in Overwatch, like let's say you have a really shitty healer and you keep losing because you have a really shitty healer. But rather than actually address the problem, you just like dance around it. You don't want to be like, right. oh, you know, this guy's really is the fact that our fucking, you know, but, Lucio but, but, just keeps on. running in there and I dying. I get what you're like, saying, but what two things. Number one, listen to it yourself because I didn't paraphrase it exactly right. And number two, his point is not is not that he's not targeting the right people we are and we're killing a lot of them and he a lot of what he outlines is the steps that we've done and how you know the progress we've made against that fight and his, i guess one of his big points is to say we don't know who the enemy is because we don't use this term is ridiculous and like he talks he talks a lot about it which is why i'm, I'm saying i'm I, not phrasing it right i mean i I'm, i probably won't listen to it but i doubt it'll change just the principle you? I would do. part that I don't like. Like I just don't like when people don't call shit for what it is. Yeah, but I why, just find that. Well, what? why would you? Here's my here's my thing about 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 arguments in general with Doug, with you, with like a lot of people. Like, if I say to you, like there are a lot better reasons in this thing than what I'm saying, then why would you just because you not don't care enough about it, or why would you just well, dude, assume five motherfucking minutes, man? Yeah, but it's it's this was like a shorter, like. I, I could link you every pro gun thing ever and just give you like twelve hours of content and be like, "What? You I, mean you're not going to watch all twelve hours?" No, I hours? read a really long article from. It was called like, um, it was this chick defending her AR-15 and why she needs one, and it was like a really long thing. And I wanted to hear the arguments that were. I mean, I, I think it's good on both sides to hear like people's arguments so you can make your own. I mean, no, you can I just mean, you can and just that's make another. Your, that's another good pro gun argument. Which one? Just females in general. It's an equalizer. Like, as, like, you know, as, like, a six-foot-six six male, I don't need a gun to defend myself. Because I can take most, like, like I'm I'm a big enough dude to where even if somebody could You're not fuck a big me enough up, dude to survive a headshot. No, yeah, but that's the thing. That is, this is my point. Um, I'm 6'6", six, six, pretty big guy, pretty strong. I, I work out, you know. I'm pretty, pretty impressive. Um... But I don't need a weapon to defend myself because even the people that could fuck me up, they're not going to because they're going to pick on somebody weaker. Um, I'm not really worth the effort. But if you're you know, a five foot nothing, 110 pound woman, 
Like, you're just a goddamn walking target, you know? If somebody wants to rob you and fuck your shit up, you're just, all right, like, nothing I can do, but, you know, like, my, my stepmom, for example, she's tiny as fuck. Anybody could come and fuck her up and jack her shit, but she's got a gun. Equalizer. I, uh, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, six foot eight yeah. Tyrone can't just come and fuck her shit up because... I mean, I see what you're saying, but I mean, like, again, that doesn't, I, I don't think a lot of people, I, I, honestly, maybe there are people, and I assume there are actually, that are on the gun control side of things that don't think that civilians should own any type of gun, but I think those are kind of in the minority. Like, I'm definitely pro. (laughs) Did you see what happened with Germany? Uh, no. Some guy took, some guy walked into a German theater with uh, oh, yeah. an assault oh, yeah. rifle, held 50 hostages, and I put out a, a, a triggering tweet. Let me find the tweet. It was pure Zyback gold. Let me find it here. Uh, hearing rumors that a gunman entered a German movie theater and held hostages, impossible considering guns are illegal there. Right. Uh, very clever tweet. I'm very proud of that. 14 likes, 4 retweets. Yeah, man. I liked it. Zinger. Good. Yeah, but uh, then again, I was saying, like, I, I don't know very many people that advocate that citizens shouldn't own any sort of gun. A lot of people do. I mean, I, I, I get that. Like, you I'm probably saying, don't know them personally, but right. a lot of people but do. I, I would say that the, the, vast, the vast, overwhelming, larger portion of people would argue that we need some smarter gun control laws, but not to the extent that people just can't own guns. Because, I mean, they're, you know, I mean, like, that's, I, I think that's a ridiculous stance to take and i get that there's people that take any fucking sort of well, stance. i mean no the, the it's not <clears throat> the thing with gun control is it's not actually gun control it's the issue it's a, it's a mental health thing that's we need better mental health screening and and things if we actually want to stop these things from happening um but that's tough yeah but those are those are also part of the gun control argument because yeah. if you're, no, it's, if you're it's, relating it's, that mo- mental health thing to your ability to own any gun as related to anybody else, then that's yeah, part see, of the gun control. And I don't think it's going to happen, dude. I, I think it's not. The, the more realistic situation is that people need to take personal responsibility for themselves. I think that's the easiest solution and the best solution. So so I saw one, one tweet <laughs> the other day that was uh, funny that these mass shootings never happen at like gun shows or NRA meetings. Like something along that line. And I just kind of thought to myself, like, I really hope that one does. As horrible as that sounds, like, I really hope that some clown at a gun show just goes off and kills like 80 people. He'll eventually get shot, probably. But in the the crossfire, though, hang on, in the crossfire, the fucking Yeehaw Texan who's there shooting. They all shoot each other? Yep, they all kill tries each to other. shoot him, hits a guy behind him, and then it just turns into a fucking like World War Three trenches thing. I really want that to happen, and that sounds yeah, really that's, bad. That's a cartoon s- scenario, though. I mean, but I want it to happen. What would you think would happen if somebody well, went? I mean, to a it has show? happened before in Texas, where the the shoot. they that draw Muhammad contest or whatever. Some people tried to go and shoot that shit up. Didn't work. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to, you'd have to, off, it wouldn't be as easy of a target, of course. Like, you'd have to be a lot smarter. Like, you couldn't just go in, like, with a fucking, you know, fucking um, t shirt, fucking flip flops, and shorts with a uh, fucking gun of any type and hope to get anywhere because you're going to get shot pretty quick. Yeah, no, somebody could go in there and kill a few people, but you're not going to have a, a goddamn France situation where it was in France, right? Where they, they, went in and held a bunch of hostages. Like, that's not going to fucking happen. You would have to... I was trying to think of, like... <laughs> and then I was trying to plan out, like, how I would do it. Like, if I was going to go in and shoot up, like, a, a gun show or an NRA meeting. Isn't that fucked up? I, I, I have thought the same shit. I was like, dude, if I was... Like, maybe this is me being very egotistical, but, dude, I feel like I would be a way better mass murderer than all these other clowns. Yeah. I feel like I would fuck kids up. The key and I wouldn't is, use a gun. The key is not being predictable. The like, key and, is and fucking also, explosives, not firearms, you fucking And, and also, like, uh, if you're going to kill some... Well, anyway. <laughs> Dude, the so, key is, is if you can get your hands on some fucking explosives and, like, hand... Like, oh, dude, a fucking hand grenade. Like, a hand grenade in a movie theater would fuck... Dude, if you could, like, 
even just like imagine a backpack full of like 20 hand grenades holy fuck or even just like bootleg home depot explosives that's how you fucking do it home depot fuck firearms are those located near the light bulbs or like where do you get those in home depot no no i'm just saying i'm just saying you can there's there's kids on youtube that build these giant fucking bombs just to blow shit up because it's fun uh my dad actually makes his own fireworks my dad's a big uh he probably could get arrested because he buys things like aluminum powder and like oh is he just one of those people that just ammonium to nitrate make shit go boom yeah he what he does is he has yeah, a so good, he's the perfect example of somebody he, that can build a bomb out of just makeshift stuff yeah well he what he did he showed me how to do it a while ago but it's really all he did was he got a bunch of gunpowder and gunpowder is not the best thing to use but it ignites quick and he uh, basically <laughs> cracked open fireworks and used some shit out of those but. He uh, filled up a uh, toilet paper roll, and he used a glue gun to like seal the bottom and the top of it. And he stuck like some fuse in it. <laughs> Fucking, he used to throw fireworks at me as a kid. But anyway, uh, pretty crazy. I actually, funny story. I so he, oh, and what he does too is he thinks it's funny. Is he takes like male underwear ads out of the newspaper and then like wraps them and then like gives them out as like gifts or something? I was down there for Christmas. Your dad is a fucking child. Oh yeah, my he's god, a weird, he's a weird dude. Um, cool guy, smokes a lot of pot. But anyway, so we're, I'm down there for Christmas, and he's like he's doing some shit with fireworks or whatever, and it's you know it's hot in Florida, so you can do this kind of stuff. And he gives me like two or three of these like homemade fireworks and. Uh, they're basically like little bombs. And um, I don't really like, you know, I'm not as big into it as he is, right? So I just throw them in my car door. And I'm I like, would not uh, have that shit. Yeah. So anywhere I, I, in a closed I, environment. No, no, no. So this, it gets better. So I just throw them in my car door. And I'm like, I'll deal with those things later. I'll throw them away later or whatever. You know, it's, I'll light them or something. I'll do something with them. So I forgot about them, right? And I came home. The car with my hot. car. Um, and so in part of my job, I call on power plants, right? So one day I had to go take, uh, this guy out to lunch. I can uh, see where this is going at Surrey nuclear power facility, um, uh, in Surrey, Virginia <laughs> and, uh, Surrey nuclear and like all other nuclear power plant facilities are patrolled by, you know, yeah, they search you and stuff. Yeah. I search you, search a car, they do swipes, they do all kinds of shit, right? So I have like me and uh, this um, co-worker, my boss, in my car and we're going to pick up this guy for lunch and I get out of my car uh, and you have to open all your doors, windows, uh, trunk, hood, everything and they swipe it for residue, they use mirrors, they use all kinds of shit. And I'm standing there in the... the um, uh, guard shack signing in and it fucking hit me. I'm like, oh my god. You have this... two homemade explosive devices <laughs> I have in your car. Bombs in my fucking car, like holy shit. And I'm like, dude, they didn't find it. And I was like, oh thank Christ. So I was like, so we pick up this guy, right? And we leave that is this... some shitty fucking search. Yeah. The well it was in the I mean I guess they figure like if you're going to hide it, you're not going to be a, an idiot enough to put it in the fucking door or like in the console or something. It's going to be like underneath the car, I guess, or I, I don't know, but they didn't find it. And um, so I was leaving, right? So we had to leave the site with this guy to get lunch and I'm like, I'll throw it away at lunch. So I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> so we're coming back in the gate with this Surrey employee and my boss and me and it hit me as I was driving up to the gate. I'm like, shit, I didn't throw those fucking things away. So I tell this guy, I was like, hey, I'm going to pull over into the visitor center real quick before we go through the gate. Uh, I got to throw some stuff away in a garbage can. And this guy's like, what? He's Not like, suspicious no. at all. This guy's like, no, 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 don't even worry about it. He's like, I've got a fucking garbage can in my office. Whatever. I got a bathroom there too if that's what you got to do. He's like, just, just keep going. And I'm like, shit. Dude, I had to go back through the gate knowing that these things are there the whole time. They didn't find them again. Probably because they didn't search as hard because I'd already been there once. But yeah, I went, took I took bombs into a nuclear site uh, twice the same day. Um, yeah, the, the the most autistic part of that entire story is the <laughs> fact that you forgot that you had them. Let's go ahead and just chalk that up on the list. Uh, yeah, whatever. You know, typically you know that's people's first priority. 
Oh shit, I accidentally carried a bomb into a nuclear power plant. Yeah, nuclear. Oh, nu- what did I say, nuclear? No, you said nuclear. Whatever, I fucking, so. whatever. I know it's <laughs> nuclear, you motherfuckers. Anyway, anyway uh, that's not the only time I've ever done some... Di- I had a shotgun in my car, actually, because I was going to uh, I was gonna go to the range to shoot it. I had my shotgun when I back when I owned it. My roommate gave it to me as payment for because he couldn't pay his rent, so he gave me a shotgun. I uh, <laughs> I took that to Smithfield, Smith, you know the Smithfield ham. Um, yeah. That was one of my accounts actually. Um, so I went into Smithfield ham, which is awful, by the way. Like if you ever go into those places, that is like some of the worst thing you could. Is it, what is it? Just fat? Would you go into like a factory where they're like it's systematically the process- processing yeah. them? Yeah. Yeah. So. It was, what's what what was bad was like it's not even that is uh, there's a conveyor belt that feeds into a dumpster, so like there's a, if you can imagine like basically the size of a Connex box you know what that is right like where you big rectangular thing where you store shit had an sure. open top it was a huge dumpster this conveyor belt um, put shit into it and it filled up truck would come get it put a new one whatever. But it's like spines and like heads and like fucking like bones and like the ne- the shit they don't use. Yeah. It just keeps dumping into that dumpster all day long in the fucking 90 degree sun. And it mm. smells just putrid. Appetizing. Anyway, so I go in there. I go to this thing. It was like a 10 minute sales call. And I go to leave. And this lady's like, can you open your trunk? You know, could they search you on the way out to see if you have any like company property or whatever? And it like hit me that I'm a fucking shotgun. That's not that bad though. Hang on. And it wasn't even like in a case. Like it was just in, in my trunk. People do this like, shit all the time. Lo- like loaded. Right. But you also, a place where you're not supposed to take any weapons aren't getting searched. So it hit me and I was like, fuck. And it was like this little old granny lady. And you can tell that like a security guard, you can tell like she's never had anything like ever happen to her ever. Like she's not prepared at all for anything. So I, um, I was like, hey, she's like, Are you, I need you to open your trunk. And I'm like, I just want to let you know before I do this that I have a shotgun in my trunk. And it's because I was going to take it to the range and I forgot to take it out. But it's there. So, like, don't get scared. <laughs> I opened my trunk. Dude, do you, you really <laughs> think this lady is so fucking sheltered she was just going to, like, tremble at the sight of a shotgun in a trunk? No, but I probably would have been kicked off site, never allowed to return, which is a fucking problem for my job. <laughs> so I don't. I made a case. Yeah, you, dude, you will believe me. Um, if you violate some company's rules, you think they're just gonna let you drive on their site whenever you want? So uh, anyway, she was like, "Don't ever bring that in here again." I, actually, another story. While we're on the the, the same account, uh, Sierra, my then girlfriend, now wife, was going with me because I only had to make one sales call that day and I could take off, right? <laughs> she accompanied me. I was like, you can go with me, whatever. Just take my car while I make my sales call. Come back, pick me up. Um, she drops me off at the front of the building and they tell me I have to go around to the construction gate where all the trucks come. Well, that's at the back of the site, which is like a mile and a half away. <laughs> so like I call her. Her phone doesn't answer I have to walk in my like full like long sleeve sales shit in the 90 degree sun all the way back to this construction gate. And there's not like a person entrance like it's you have to drive through. So there's like two semi trucks in the gate ready to go through. And then I'm standing in line behind the second semi truck like a fucking idiot. Like like you would in like Wendy's, you know, like if you had to you're walk going up through a drive through and you're like just standing there walking. Yep. Yep, it was, was a construction gate, 90 degree sun. I have a black shirt, black pants on, and I'm standing behind the two semi trucks. And I just like walk up and I'm like, hey, I don't have my car. My coworker took it. Um, I kind of need to make this sales call with this guy or whatever. Anyway, I do. The sales call lasted five minutes. She didn't have her phone. So I had to like walk three miles in the 90 degree heat at Purdue after, I mean at uh, Smithfield after standing behind two semi trucks in a fucking drive through. I've done some crazy shit, dude, at accounts. I've not been put. I ripped my pants one time uh, in a factory that made uh, railroad cars, train cars. I ripped my pants and had to like sidewalk out of the facility. Covered Where did you by, rip them? Oh, like right in the ass, in the balls, like the whole way. Like not. I've not never pleasant. done that. Really? No. Nope. These were like old pants, 
And uh, like I have to do. I've ripped I, my pockets out before. Like I've, I, I have holes in some of the pockets. Like I bought these cheap ass pants because I'm, you know, in transition from being like a fat fuck into not a fat fuck. So I had to buy intermediary trans, like, right, like cheap transition pants. pants. So I just, yeah. So I bought these pants, and the fucking pocket quality is shit. Like, I don't understand how it, how they keep like coming apart, but they do. So I literally have duct tape holding the pockets together. What part of the pocket rips? It's the seam, like like the seam that holds the two parts together. If that makes sense. Like, pull your pockets out; they'll be like a seam. Yeah, no, I got it. I just that's where it's, that's where it's fucking is coming apart. Because the do stitching you like, is. Do some you like shit. just fucking shove your hands in your pockets, or like, I don't get it. I've never no, had a pocket. I think maybe that. maybe some of it has been like me just walking with my hands in my pockets, and you know I'm like putting pressure on that on that seam, and I'm used to wearing pants where the quality isn't so shit that that would come apart. Yeah. So. Fair yeah, I'm not worried about it. Uh, I'm gonna have to buy a whole bunch of new clothes anyway here pretty soon. <laughs> I had that's, somebody. That's ex- it's exciting, but it's also like kind of a pain in the dick because it's gonna be expensive. Speaking of one last thing about security, I was at um, this facility last week, and every time I drive in there, they make me open my hood and they look in there for like, I guess like, I don't know, foreign bombs or something. And then when I drive out, they look in the back of my car and in the trunk. And like, I I knew why they were looking under the hood, right? Because that's pretty obvious. But I didn't know what they were looking for in my back seat and like in my trunk. So I was leaving last week, and finally I asked the security guard lady, I was like, what do you guys look for Like when I leave all the time? You like look in my back seat and my trunk. She's like, honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> Just tell us we have to look in there. Nice. I'm like, I'm like, really? Okay, well, all right. I'm glad I don't have whatever it is you don't know that you need to find. <laughs> it's, it's good times. Anyway, uh, Ruin was such assholes. I remember sitting in raids of 20 people to help Douglas because they were camping him and Douglas was only level 30s. Is it some guild, I guess, that... Yeah, I actually linked a video to that guy. <laughs> Essentially, oh, you... their entire... You can you can watch that, like, you, it's a short video. You can just mute it and watch it and see what he's talking about. But, essentially, they found Doug on one of the leveling planets and brought their entire fucking guild out there, basically, to kill him. Nice. Like, one guy. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, you'll see. on the video, you'll see what I'm talking about. Like, they just keep fucking coming. Wait. That, is that... Th- whose viewpoint is this? Uh, it's my viewpoint. And, and obviously all that red is them trying to kill him. Can you link that video? I, I don't have the link to it. Because I'll link it to the people that are... Just link it to me real quick. So, like, is he... What class are you? I am an assassin. The objective. Oh, okay. So you're like stealth or something? Yeah, I'm stealth. I mean, he's stealth too, right? No, Doug, they they, they killed him. They're camping his body. <laughs> wow. <laughs> nice. Dude, you see it's what I'm overkill. talking about? You think that's we, a little overkill? We tried to... One um, guy. One guy got all of them out there for that. We, um... When Wildstar released the Wildstar Nation... Uh, guild. We had a big guild. We had like a four per- hundred person member guild. Um, went out to Crimson Badlands to camp uh, exiles, <laughs> and we as a guild could not take down like a couple guards of the fucking camp. We had like a couple hundred people. Yeah, out you there. needed to have somebody that was actually like a decently geared tank to be able to take those out because they would just kill everybody. You need to have somebody that held aggro on it. So yeah, that was retarded. Um, holy shit, GM of Dara, Dara McTire helped out Post Malone. This is like that crazy shit in movies where two parts of your life that seem how related are somehow related. I don't think, po- dude, what the fuck is a Post Malone? Is that guy that, anything? Uh, apparently some rapper, I don't know. Post Malone. Dude, look, dude, look at this fucking guy, dude. Yeah, he's uh, a character. Look at this shit. Yeah, look, he does look, look pretty retarded. That. Wow. Oh, if, God. <laughs> that's so <laughs> bad. Like, that guy will never be anything because he looks fucking horrible. Like, He's I guess definitely going to have a hard time in job interviews if he uh, doesn't make it. Rap. 
Have you seen that uh, that white rapper named Stitches, though? I think so. Yeah, he also is a piece of shit. No, my favorite is uh, Riff Raff. Because he's like, his whole thing, he's a character. Like, he's got to be a character. Riff Raff is like this retarded white rapper that is like trying to be black. And like, he's so ridiculous that a lot of people think that it's not real. And he gets really mad when like people a- accuse him of like faking the entire thing. So I think Riff Raff is a genius. I-, I think he's actually probably a smart dude. It's just acting like a complete fucking retard because he's selling it as that. There's no way that guy's real. If he is real, he's hilarious. Oh, sh- I, I just Google imaged him. Like, that guy looks like... What was that movie, Malibu's Most Wanted? That's what this guy looks like. This guy, fucked. it's gotta be a character, man. Dude, there's no way this guy is this fucking insane. Like, I bet this is just a white dude that that found a, a niche market and is just so absurd that that's his thing. Probably. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Alright. Anyway, get Maldavin on. All about product placement. I don't care about the million, billion, trillion. Your uh, random audio levels are irritating as fuck. That was that was from the last show. That, that yeah. got fixed. Was this recorded before Game 7? Yes, it was. Do you care about basketball? Not really. I don't either. I mean, I, I play it, but like I don't I don't really watch it. When you say you play it, how often do you play basketball? Uh, I played today. You played basketball today? Yep. After I did my leg workout. With who? With uh, with nobody today. I was not... There wasn't anybody there, but... Um, I, I do play pickup games every now and then. I'm kind of glad nobody was there because my legs were pretty noodly. So, I wouldn't have done very well. But yeah, no, I play a good bit. Fair enough. Uh, that's it. That's all we got for that. Uh, you got any other topics or anything? Let me look. Uh, oh, this is actually a, uh, this is kind of like a, an open topic, but, um, we can probably end it off with this if you want. Uh, the other stuff we can wait, but I thought this was a, a, a good, like, what if question. So if you were arrested randomly what do your friends and family think you did? Like, let's say randomly you get arrested and taken off to jail, but your friends and family have no idea. Like, like they don't know what it is. W- what do you think they'd speculate it was? <sighs> Man. I don't know. Like, I depend Friends and family. So not people that kind of know me, but not really. Friends and family. Yeah, like, let's uh, say, let's say you randomly you get taken away in handcuffs. The police come, nut, bang down the door. They take you away in front of your wife and kid. What does your wife think you did? God, I don't know. Probably, probably, uh, stole things. Probably, <laughs> probably, yeah, probably, uh, thievery. Uh, yeah, I get, yeah. My, would, probably, yeah. So I think for me, uh, my friends and family would probably think Rapist. I was in some sort of, no, white collar, like internet crime. That's what they would think. They would probably think I was in on some internet, like scam, uh, white collar crime of some sort. They'd probably think I was part of some like nerdy bullshit with Bitcoins yeah. or some, some shit. That makes sense. Um, or they or- like, thought I like hacked somebody. Cause like my uh, my relatives think I really am some sort of like technological like god, when in reality I'm not obviously, but they think I'm like this computer whiz just because like I know how to do like slightly advanced things, like make PNG graphics. You know what's you know what's fucking funny is or not funny but you know what irritates me is like my dad right like he's got a computer right or a couple of them, and like. So old people, when they ask you to do computer things, like, for instance, my dad tries to do really advanced shit on a computer, but he doesn't know the basics of computers. Like, he probably couldn't copy and paste something. Give me an yet, example of, like, one of the advanced things he tries to do. Um, he tries to, like, uh, 
FaceTime and like Skype, and he tries to That's like. Not very advanced. Dude. Yeah, but he tries to like. Okay, well, it's not advanced, but when you don't know how to copy and paste, and he tries to like install programs, and he tries to do like BitTorrent things. Okay, BitTorrent, I think, is uh, approaching advanced, kind of. Right, but he just ends up giving himself viruses and registry errors, and he does he doesn't know how to get himself out of the situations that he gets himself in. So it's kind of like a like a little fucking crab in a crab trap where it like goes in but it can't get out. That's like what he does with computers. And then he'll ask me like how to fix it. And like that's the really irritating yeah. thing about old people too is they'll be like, "How do I fix my computer?" There's and you're an like, "I have to- industry of like just confusing old people." Like, right. I I feel bad for them because there's so many like entrapment things for them to fall into with like fake download buttons. I mean, even that shit gets me every now and then. Where you'll, where you'll get on, like, some shitty torrent website, and they'll have, like, fake download buttons that aren't real, and you have to, like, mouse over them and check the URL and shit, because, yeah, yeah. I can't oh, imagine yeah. not being tech-savvy and having all that shit thrown at you and being like, oh, God, you can't And you know how big after. the business is for, like, oh, yeah, it's those huge. people that call in tech support, and you have to try to fix that over the phone, like... That's got it. Takes you forever because like you're not seeing what they see. You know what I mean? And that when well, a the things do uh, the 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 screen sharing shit. Yeah, you have to do that. Yeah, because like, and that, that's what irritates my my dad is he'll be like, "How do I fix whatever?" And I'm like, "I don't know. I have to see it." And he's like, "You just don't give a fuck." And I'm like, "No, not really." But <laughs> like, but, uh, but what beyond... you're complaining about is very broad. <laughs> but, but my computer that... is slow. Right, right. Like, how do I? He'll be like, I can't get Flight Simulator to work because he loves Flight Simulator. And I'm like, I don't know. Did you try fixing the installation or reinstalling it or something? Dude, my go-to move, like I've had a bunch of coworkers come and bring me their computers and be like, is there way you can make this shit faster? I was like, my go-to move is always just factory reset it, dude. That is the fucking number one thing uh, that fixes like everything. Like, yeah. listen, because most of them, most of the time, they don't have anything they actually give a fuck about on the hard drive. I'm like, right. listen, I'm going to make this thing exactly like it was when you got it brand new. Right. Uh, yeah. So, so, yeah, that's irritating as shit. But, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I think if I actually did get in trouble, though, it would probably be for something dumb. It would be for, like, some stupid white-collar fucking scam. From Dude, that's not dumb crime. Yeah, I guess. White collar crime, dude. If you're gonna be a criminal, a white collar criminal is the one you want to be. So, so they that's have that... gonna give you the most benefit, the potential most benefit for the least amount of punishment. Like, if you're like selling weed, like they fucking you get fucked over if you get caught selling weed. But if you like do what uh what's her name uh, Martha Stewart did, like insider trading, where like. God knows how much, how long she was doing it for, and how much fucking money she made, and how much, how many people she fucked over, just to get a little slap on the wrist. Like, yeah, she went to prison, but like, whatever. You know, it's probably worth it, dude. In her case, it was worth it. It made her her her, her brand more popular. You know what I found the other day? There's a site called EpicOMG.com that uh, (laughs) uh, I found this some via some method that I won't disclose. But anyway. It's a porn site, right? You know what it is? It's ripped chatterbait streams. So like all they do is they take like OBS and they fucking just record that person's stream and put their logo on it and put it on their website. Cuz I was a on lot of a, shit like that in porn. Dude, have you ever seen a porn video where they take so it's watermarked? Like it'll have the original but watermark it's blurred out and then, and then, and then, and then they'll, they'll blur it out and put their watermark over it. Dude, I've seen that like 5 deep before. <laughs> where you can tell that, like, it were, like, where it's, like paint. five different fucking watermarks. You're like, God damn. <laughs> that's the new coat of paint. Steven motherfuckers. That's it. That's it. Yeah, but this one is just ripped chatterbait streams, which is even more scuzzy because, like, those people are doing that shit for tips. You know what I mean? And, like, the fucking – the only reason I know that, the only reason I know that is because there was like two or three people I routinely had watched and I was like, Oh, that's kind of cool. Cause it was this hot, like Colombian chick on chatterbait one time. And like the, the setup stuck in my mind, like their couch and like how they had it set up was a little unique. So I was on a different site, like one of those free cam sites, like not Pornhub, but it's like, you know, one of those things and where it has all the thumbnails on it. Right. 
And I looked at one of the thumbnails and I was like, that's a fucking chatterbait stream. What the fuck? And I click on it and it was that that site. And I'm like, I wonder if well, this site is rebroadcasting it. No, it's no, it's not even that. It, like I said, they literally do the stream thing and rip it and then they make it a video and use it as their own content. Yeah. So so it's not even like content that another Yeah, it's not even content that like another company owns. It's literally like a, you know, basically yeah, like it's just free booting of the porn website of the porn industry. So uh Dude, Yeah. There's such a missed opportunity with the webcam websites, man. Yeah, All you got to do, dude, if you had good production value, oh dude, you would stand out so fucking much. Yeah. You would I uh I tried to make a porn website in college, by the way. <laughs> it's called it's Sorry. called Bank It's called bangmaster.com. I couldn't come up with a better name than that. <laughs> so that's what I had. And it was just it was just stolen videos that <laughs> was like put up on this thing. And I charged four ninety nine a month and I had three three subs. Three subs. So I got fifteen dollars for my porn website that I took down after like two months. I went, what year was this? Uh two thousand and two thousand? Two thousand and one. Okay, so I, I was getting ready to say that's early enough to where somebody would have still paid for it. Because if right. you had done that now, there's no, like I was surprised you even got three people to pay for it, to be honest. <laughs> I got three people to pay for it. Yeah. How did you, you know, how did you even get three people? Like how did you market this thing? I didn't at all. <laughs> like what, it was on Google? Yeah. Well, Google and it just existed. So like I you if you upload a video to other sites, you can like put your little links in it or whatever. So there was I mean it really wasn't marketed very well. So like I, just I don't can't believe you even got anybody on there. Yeah. Well, my buddy was a computer science guy and he had some pretty good. And that was back in oh, the so day you had when some help. Yeah, I didn't do it myself. It was me and him. So he made like the payment interface and like that all that other bullshit cuz I my knowledge of of HTML coding was basically gathered from going to the source code from like other websites. Are you that... jacking people's code? Oh yeah. Oh, oh my yeah. god, you guys are the scummiest of scum. Yeah, but it wasn't anything like again, it was not like there's no JavaScript. There was I mean this was literally like like fucking like day one HTML coding fucking class shit. So um he knew some shit I didn't know. Like I just did the anyway. So yeah, I did do that for a little bit. Speaking of um PayPal. So I have a PayPal account linked to my old UF email, which is the one I actually use. My actual email is an account that I made for my great grandma to like to give her an account so that like when she wanted to buy me things, I just used that account to like pay for them. And she also paid for things that way. So I managed it for her. It was my email, the pa- I knew the password, but it was her information, right? Her name, her credit card, her whatever. Right. Well, she died like, I don't know, five years ago or six years ago. And PayPal just sent me an email addressed to her that's like, we noticed unusual activity, suspicious activity on your account. You know, please, blah, 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 blah. Somebody hacked her PayPal account, right? Yep. That's happened to me before. So I'm like, well, she's not even around. So I'm like, obviously, I could, I could not just not care about this and it would probably go away because, I mean, oh, you know. Your money back. What are they going to do? So I'm like, well, PayPal would probably want to know about this. So I called PayPal, and I was like, hey, um, here's this uh, uh, email, and here's the password. Uh, This is under this person's name. She was my grandma. I managed it for her. And um, they're like, well, we can't give you any information about her account uh, because you're not not your counter. And I said, understand. I don't want any information. I'm just letting you know that she's dead. So you might want to just suspend that account or whatever because I don't want you guys to get screwed out of money because you're not going to get it back from her because, again, she's dead. Uh, so I'm just letting you know as a courtesy that you might want to look into that. And they're like, understand, sir, but we can't give you any information about her account. And I was like, I don't want any fucking information about her account. I'm just telling you <laughs> the status. And they're like, okay. And I'm like, so are you guys going to like do anything? or like? No, they're not going to do dick. They're, they're like... They're like, we can't give you any information about our account. I was like, I swear to God, if you say that one more time, I was like, I just want to know if you're going to do anything at all. And they're like, well, we'll look into it, sir. Hmm. And I'm like, all right. That was after. So when you, call a, anything, company, when you call a company, right, it was like, it was like you know, uh, we're experiencing unusually high call volumes or whatever. We can call you back if you press one. 
So I'm like, that sounds good. And they're like, it's going to be like 23 minutes. I was like, holy fuck. So I press one. You say your name. They're like, all right, we'll give you a call back. PayPal calls me back like 20 minutes later, right? I pick up the phone and they're like, when, uh, you know, is on the line, please press one. I do. And it goes, transferring you to a representative. And then it goes, we're sorry. We're experiencing unusually high call volumes. If you would like a call back, please press one. Yep. And and I was like, are you <laughs> fucking kidding me, babe? Are you serious? And like it, uh, I was going through that shit, and somebody picked up, and that was the fucking we can't give any information person. Like, dude, I don't know how p- companies like function. I, at I've all. had a I've had a good experience. Like when my PayPal got hacked, it was when like whatever uh, two hundred thousand accounts got compromised, and mine was just one of them. So I got excellent service because I guess it was their fault. <laughs> right. But yeah, the guy that hacked my PayPal account bought UGG boots. Really? Like so he's white. Thousands of dollars in them. So he's white, obviously. I guess I don't know, uh, but he bought UGG boots and had them shipped to Australia, and he never he, it never uh, happened. Like the 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 purchases never went through, because I guess they they knew that my account was one of the fifty, you know, two hundred thousand, whatever the fuck it was that got compromised. So nothing ever happened. But yeah pretty crazy nice uh, uh but yeah no i had it, mine was fucking easy dude i was wham bam five minute call and that was it uh anyway you want to wrap it up there i gotta piss pretty bad yeah that's fine i mean we it was like damn near almost three hours anyway today. two hours and 36 minutes uh aka see- damn near almost three yeah. hours uh i was just looking to see if we missed anything big i don't think so all right, guys. Well, I uh, hope you enjoyed Hive Mind number 32, and we'll see you again next week. Uh, be sure to check us out on YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, wherever you want to watch us. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, Google, like iTunes, has taken forever to. I'm, I'm going to check that right now. iTunes, Hive Mind. I'm curious if it's updated. For whatever reason, iTunes and Google Play don't like to update quickly. Okay, it's up there now, but goddamn, it takes a while sometimes. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you again next week. Have a good one.